I welcome all deputies here to what is always probably the most exciting moment in the three yearly calendar. I'm delighted that so many of you are here. I know there are some new deputies here. I may not know all of you yet. Um, I know Ian Goldrain, newly uh, Bowdenshaw, South Manchester, have come back to the board since March. And I don't know where Ian is. I think he's here somewhere. Could he wave? There he is. Ian, welcome to you. And are there any other new deputies here? Um, I also want to stress how influential the board is. We managed to arrange today for the Manchester train to arrive at Euston 40 minutes early. Hey. Memo to Jeremy Corbyn, don't underestimate the influence of the Board of Deputies. Without further ado, deputies, I'm going to ask the Chair of the Constitution Committee, Tony Leifer, uh, to refer to the appointment of a returning officer and the appointment of two scrutineers. Tony. Th uh, thank you, Mr. President. Um, the Constitution Committee proposed Rachel Savage as the returning officer, and she accepted, and in accordance with our usual practice, um, I'd seek the approval of the board. Rachel, would you stand up? So, those in favour. Thank you very much. And uh, Rachel, Rachel, um, Rachel has found two willing scrutineers, both of whom have been uh, happily approved by all of the candidates. And they are Shelley Salter. Shelley, are you here? Uh, Shelley Salter. And Warren Osden. Warren, are you here? Stand up, Warren, please. Thank you. Uh, are they approved, please? Thank you very much. I now ask the returning officer, Rachel Savage, to explain to deputies the procedures for the election. Right. Good morning, everyone. Um, thank you for not objecting to my um, appointment as returning officer. I'm not sure what you would have done otherwise. Um, and I'd also like to thank all of the other people who came forward as scrutineers who were either objected to or just more than, than what we can take in the room, um, because it, it is giving up, volunteering to give up your time and volunteering not to hear the vice presidents speak. Um, so thank you very much for that. With the papers for the meeting, we circulated a note that set out the procedures for the election. Um, and in contrast to board style, um, I will assume that you have all read that. But I did want to make a couple of quick points. Um, one of which is that it would be very helpful if you vote your ballots separately. So if you have put your ballots in the ballot box, that's fine and we'll deal with it. But otherwise, um, at the end of the presidential hustings, could you just deposit your vote for president and hold on to your vote for vice president? We will take the ballot boxes away, we will empty them, we will bring them back again, and you can vote for vice president at that point. The voting system that we're using today is a ranked preference system. That means that you put a one against your most preferred candidate, a two against your second most preferred candidate, and so on down the ballot. You can rank as many or as few candidates as you like, and you stop when you have no further preference against those candidates. Um, and then we will go away and determine who the presidents and vice presidents for the next triennium will be. I'm very happy to answer questions, but we should do that probably after the presidential hustings to avoid um, holding up the meeting any further. Thank you. Thank you very much to the returning officer. Well, deputies, without further ado, we shall now embark on the hustings for the election uh, of the president. And uh, I will uh, ask the candidates if they would please leave the room with the exception or let me tell you the order, they drew lots. Um, Edwin Shuka will be first, followed by Sheila Giewold, uh, number three will be Simon Hochhauser, number four, Marie van der Zyl. 
So I will ask if uh, Sheila, Simon and Marie would kindly withdraw to what we have called the holding pen. <laughs> Sounds like something before Shechita. Is it five minutes? Yes. So I will remind deputies, um, uh, and in particular for Edwin's reminder, five minutes to speak and uh, five minutes for questions. Um, the timekeeping will be kept by Gillian and Richard. There is an online timer there. And there is also a screen. I can't see it, but I think it's the case that the candidate will be able to see it from the rostrum. So I won't be interrupting uh, to say that they have 30 seconds left, but at countdown, I will strictly and consistently for all candidates uh, tell the candidate that they need to conclude there and then. If the five minutes yeah, I'm getting that. If a candidate does not utilize the full five minutes, for uh, speaking, then any time left over will be added on for them for the questions. The time for asking questions will not be counted as part of their time for answering the questions, but that is not an invitation for you to ask long questions or make speeches. I now have pleasure in inviting Edwin Shuka, Deputy for Woodside Park Synagogue, to address you. Do I start? <coughs> I will start automatically or shall I? Yeah. Okay. <coughs> Deputies, good morning. I first of all want to thank you for tolerating us, our emails, our flyers, our uh, manifestos, and uh, this is it. After that, there won't be any. Almost 47 years ago, I left Baghdad as a frightened teenager literally scared for my life and unsure as to what the future may bring. This morning, I stand at the heart of the Jewish community of the United Kingdom, a country that gave me refuge and a community that embraced me and my family to live in freedom and in peace. Now, nearly half a century later, I'm asking for a mandate to lead. Over the past 38 years, I went for every responsibility and duty that came my way. I spent six years in the old city of Jerusalem, being the first director of the Sephardic Educational Center. I spent two years in America, being the national, uh, 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 the national director of the American Sephardi Federation. I was vice president of the European Jewish Congress. I was the special envoy of the president. I traveled exclusively across the world telling the story of the Jews of Arab countries. I was the president of Justice for Jews from Arab countries. A duty that I took so seriously that I felt once the need to go to Baghdad in a war-torn Iraq in order to establish justice and establish the link, and I did. I went to Libya. This is not a travelogue. This is to tell you that I've come here after 38 years of experience and 38 years of knowing communities around the world and the UK, I have never failed to deliver. I am a consensus builder, a facilitator, and a motivator. I have been fortunate in my private and business life to be able to respond to every opportunity to serve. And should I be elected today, I will prioritize the board over all others, including my business. I believe that the board today is as strong and relevant as any time in our 250 years. We have a dedicated, resourceful, and professional staff. Our finances are in order, thanks to Stuart. The JLC, under the chairmanship of Jonathan Goldstein, 
has proven a laudable partner and an envisaged the relationship to continue and thrive with the blessing and admiration of the whole community. Jonathan Arkush has managed to place the board at the center of the community, and if elected, I see my task to put the community at the center of the board. I want to broaden its mandate, and I want to assist in fundraising. Deputies, I want the buzz that you have today to last for three years. I want you to come prepared to discuss and debate the issues that matters to you and to your community. I want these meetings to draw the line for the next generation. I want us to discuss sexual abuse in the community, inclusivity, women in Jewish leadership, challenges facing UJS. I want to do faith schools. I don't want you to hear me. I want to listen to you. This is, sounds a very simple an idea, but it's actually a revolution, a soft revolution, and I want you to be my partners in it. The broadening of the mandate, I want the, the, the board, the, the brand board to be international. I want everything to be here. I want DDS to be discussed here. I want AGC, EJC, WJC to use us here as the center of the Jewish world. I am not a conventional candidate. I start with I'm not a barrister nor a lawyer. I'm a passionate Jew with no adjective in front. What I miss in oratory skills, I will supplement with passion and conviction. I will serve with dedication and integrity. I will be guided by the Constitution and by my Jewish values and the innate belief that the Jewish people's mission is to heal the world, tikkun olam, and that Israel is a light unto the nations. Thank you. I will invite questions. Um, 20 seconds will be added on to the time for answering the questions, and the time of questions is not counted. Uh, to be fair to candidates, I think if people ask a question of one candidate, I will probably try to find different people to ask questions of the other candidates. So I'm now going to invite questions. I, I'm going to Joe Millis, and after Joe, is that Brian Mark? I can see half your head, Brian. All right, if you get ready, if you would stand by the microphone. Is there another question that I think we'll probably have time for? Um, yes, do you want to know? Yes, do come forward. I'm, I can't remember your name. Deputy Duke, come forward to the front. That's it, thank you. All right, well, I'll take three at a time. We'll see how we go. Joe. Edwin, Alam Wasalan. Alam Wasalan, big. Um, how will you stand up for the 30 odd percent of the community, the reform, liberal, other progressive members of this community, who face discrimination and a negative attitude in Israel? Say, for instance, if a young Jewish girl, for instance, was on a tour of Israel, birthright, whatever, and is arrested when she goes to a tour, uh, women's prayer group at the, board of, at the Kotel. How will you react to that? Well, Joe, uh, when you actually asked these questions to me uh, earlier, I did my homework. I went and uh, spoke to rabbis in the reform movement, in the progressive movement, and I really felt that the story of the Kotel is at the moment in, on the, in Supreme Court. And therefore, we better not discuss it until the Supreme Court issues its thing. However, the question of, this, of the Kotel wasn't just the reform. It was a reneging by the government of Israel against a promise that it made. And that, we will absolutely fight with you on that. This was a promise made by a government, no matter what and where, and this should be answered correctly. Do give your name, please. Thank you. Deputy Freeman, um, deputy for, joint deputy with my husband for uh, Shari Tzedek Reform Synagogue, Southgate. Um, the unlikely event has happened. Um, 
not that this is unlikely, you have become the president, I didn't mean that was unlikely, um, and uh, half a dozen uh, United Synagogue rabbis have gone public about their desire to start uh, an open platform of free interesting discussion with the uh, members of the uh, reform and progressive movements. And you are asked your personal opinion, would you support this? Because there's a lot of anger within the United Synagogue against these rabbis. I will treat every progressive and every reform and every orthodox absolutely the same way. I come from a, a Sephardi synagogue. In it, there are no the Jews are, have no adjectives before them. We are all Jews. Inside this hall, everyone here, I'm treating as a British Jew. It's the board of deputies of British Jew, and every one of them is just that. And there is absolutely no difference, and I will come, and I will pray with you, and I will come and spend Shabbat with you. I, I'm Shabbat Shomer Shabbat, but I, if you host me, I'll stay with you. Thank you. Brian. Brian Mark, Jew Student, Chaplaincy, Scotland. Um, you said in your speech you wished a closer relationship with the Jewish Leadership Council. Can I ask you very specifically, and I know the Jewish Leadership Council does a lot of good, but what I want to ask you this, in respect of the inquiry that's forth standing, should there be a police inquiry into false accounting before there is an independent judicial inquiry? Should there be a police inquiry because the Fraud Act says with a view to gain for yourself or another or to cause loss to another. So if somebody takes money and you pay it back, it means they don't have to. Do you believe in an independent police inquiry before there is an inquiry uh, conducted privately by the GLC where there's no promise that the, uh, it will be published? Thank you. Uh, no, I don't. Uh, the Charity Commission has approved the board of everyone and they, and they appointed three very independent, very well-known judges. We will wait for them. We will wait for that inquiry. There's absolutely no need to get overexcited about police and police inquiries. Everybody in the community agreed to that, and, and, and we will see what the inquiry will come with, and we will abide by their recommendations. So you don't want the police. No follow-up. No follow-up. No, Brian, Brian, there's no follow-up questions. Can I have three more questions, please? It'll be the same for everyone. You made your point. Uh, Richard Cohen. And I see at the back. Um, yes, do come, for, Darren. Yes, thank you. Yes. Um, don't be shy, Deputies. David Farby. Richard Cohen, Loughton Synagogue. A jolly good morning to you. Do good you morning. aspire to this post for three years or for six years? <laughs> Um, it reminds me that if it's a, a, a person on a date and, uh, for a shidduch and they ask him, how many children do you want? <laughs> I would like to wait till one o'clock and see whether the date has accepted me or not. <laughs> Darren. Uh, Darren Vanning, Barney United Synagogue. Um, you mentioned Jewish values in your speech. Everyone has a different opinion of what Jewish values are. Um, what do they mean to you? Maybe pick what are the top three Jewish values you see at the core of Judaism and the board should follow um, as a result of that. I actually, when I said it, I, I deliberately said my Jewish values, if you notice. Um, I, for, for me, is justice. For me, is I, I was asked by the uh, Jewish Chronicle the other day, um, what thing did, have you ever regretted? And I tell you, I regret absolutely nothing. Because every single morning, I go, I get up and put on the tefillin and, and think, what, how can I become a better person and, and think, how can I change the world? And when I do that, there are no places for regret. So if you want your three, it's really the, uh, a ritual, Shabbat, tikkun olam. David Farby, Finchley Reform. What, Edwin, would you do to change, develop, improve the quality of board plenary meetings? 
<clears throat> well, uh, uh, thank you, David. This is, this is actually what I'm standing on. I'm standing on the one challenge. I mean, uh, I actually have a well-prepared uh, brief on anti-Semitism and on Israel, but I thought you will have to hear today 11 speeches. So, therefore, I will, I will spare you the same thing, and I will concentrate on the one thing, the one challenge. If I can get a list of issues that the communities want, we will give the issues out in advance, and you will be prepared for these. And if you come, and they will be here, experts and stakeholders. We are not talking here about amusing you or giving you something to, to go back home with. We are talking about planning the policy and planning the change for a whole generation. And you will be there at inception, not at policy making. And I and the honorary officers will bring back that policy to, for you to ratify months later to see whether that is what you wanted and that is what you sought for. So that when you come down the train from Manchester, you're not coming here to listen to me. You are coming to actually bring the concerns and you are bringing the best practice from your own community and to actually share into drawing what will be the next generation's agenda. Deputies, there's a minute left for questions. We don't have to fill that time, but are there, can any, I use it? Uh, are there any other questions? I can use it if you want. Sorry? I can use that minute? Yes, and I think okay. it doesn't work. No. Okay. I can see uh, at the back. Is that. Sorry? Is he Lenga? Uh, any other questions? Then, wait a minute, that I see. One second. Yes, it's one minute. So, may I'm going to, so if I do it in order, um, sorry, at the back there, you, you were first. Thank you. Yes, no, you're looking, yeah, you, you, yes, come on, you come forward. That's it. Um, and there was, that's probably going to be enough time for the moment. Izzy Lenga. Hi. Um, as you know, Joe Student like life on campus is absolutely thriving, but at the same time there is a rise of anti-Semitism on campus. I was wondering what you think the board's responsibility should be and how the board can best support Jewish students on campus in both colleges and in universities. Uh, well, I, I was going to say that one of the first issues that we will discuss is Jewish campuses. The reason why is A, because I love you guys, all of you, and secondly, and secondly, because you face things that I, we are not facing and we have no idea how to. When I sat and spoke with, with Josh and with others from UJS, with Hannah, I was shocked. I was shocked what's going on in NUS. And I thought, my goodness, how are you tolerating this without support? And the support will come only when you tell us what you have, what are your problems, how do you want us to support you, and when every one of us chip in and tell you this is how we can support you, it's all yours. Thank you. <laughs> Sally, sorry, I didn't recognise you immediately. Okay. Um, Edwin, you'll only have 13 seconds to answer the question. <laughs> I, I realise that's a little bit hard, but it's going to be the same for everyone. I'll make it a really quick Don't question. Make it. <laughs> no, I won't. Um, following on, Sally Strauss at Edwin Mazzotti Synagogue, following on from a previous question, how are you going to ensure that the decorum, democracy and order is maintained at these meetings so that the voice of deputies can be heard? Well, I actually asked the Constitution before you uh, asked me about, about trouble makers and people who actually are spoilers. And I got the answer, but I only have one second left, so be sure that it's be there. <laughs> thank you, Edwin. Um, thank you, deputies, for those questions. This, they were excellent questions, and there's no reason why, if any deputy wants to ask the same question, uh, who's uh, someone else I call, you want to ask the same question as someone previously to you, go, go right ahead. Right, um, I will now invite uh, <laughs> she, Dr. Sheila Gewald, deputy for Cardiff United Synagogue, to m enter the hall and make her presentation.
So Sheila will have five minutes to speak and five minutes to answer questions. Any time uh, under the five minutes that you don't speak will be added on for questions. Uh, and you have a screen, which I hope you can right. see, which will start ticking down when you start speaking. So I won't be interrupting you, uh, and, but I will uh, stop you, as I will all candidates, when zero is reached. Thank so, you. So, Sheila, the floor is yours. Thank you. As Labour MP Ruth Smith walked to a hearing to give evidence against a party member accused of anti-Semitism, protesters chanted, reinstate Mark Wadsworth. These same protesters said that the rows about anti-Semitism in Labour had been largely fabricated. This hearing took place 22 months after the offence and one day after the board meeting with Jeremy Corbyn. The same day, The Guardian reported that the General Secretary of the Unite Trade Union, Len McCluskey, has accused Labour MPs who have complained about anti-Semitism of smearing Jeremy Corbyn and called for them to be held to account. Whoever wins this election, British Jewry faces a gruelling extended struggle to combat anti-Semitism. This struggle will not abate on its own or any time soon. The next president needs to tenaciously attack its sources and engage tirelessly with those open to engagement to explain the Jewish perspective, to coax them to see reason. We need a president who will be judicious, articulate and relentless. Last month, I arranged and led a delegation to the South Wales Jewish community to meet with the leaders of the Muslim Council of Wales to address anti-Semitism on social media from within their membership. We successfully resolved the situation. The result, an unconditional apology and the removal of the offensive material and an undertaking from them to educate the Muslim community to avoid further instances like this occurring. We will intensify our engagement with them, including holding a joint, unique peace vigil. My approach, one of low-key collegiate negotiation, has proven to be effective and should be a template for the board's approach, in contrast to top-down haranguing. Quietly, I get results. Over the last three years, I have demonstrated tireless commitment and energy to support British Jews. I have travelled over 50,000 miles, attending nearly 300 events and visited more than 84 schools across the UK. I have exponentially expanded the board's outreach work so that we now have five versions of the Jewish Living Experience exhibition based in Brighton, Carlisle, Leicester and Newcastle as well as in London. I have initiated training for ambassadors so that they can speak confidently and accurately to non-Jewish children and other groups. These activities are essential for combating anti-Semitism and defending our Jewish way of life. I chair the board's president's dinner, which has raised hundreds of thousands of pounds under my leadership, and I was instrumental in organising the regional weekend in Gibraltar. I have a proven record of achievement. My division was the only one to have a three-year strategy and the only one to successfully execute that strategy. What's my strategy for Jeremy Corbyn? Engagement, engagement, robust dialogue and more engagement. Patient, persistent engagement. Who am I? I am not aloof, a one-man band, a headless chicken. I am not divisive or polarising. I am committed, judicious and experienced, ready to start on day one. I am a unifier who engages with people to get important things done. I am pragmatic yet resolute. Ask anyone who's worked with me. Their testimonials are in my manifesto, including one from the Secretary General of the Muslim Council of Wales. In my travels throughout the UK, I have faced hostile audiences and have asserted the board's position robustly and compellingly. I make my arguments forcefully, concisely and articulately. Our next leader must clearly project the vision of the board and attack anti-Semitism. I would like to thank my steadfast supporters. 
especially my husband Roger Gewold, for unwavering confidence in me. This election has been contentious, marked by acrimony, distrust and controversy. As president, I will unify the board. Finally, in these hustings, reference has repeatedly been made to the strong possibility between Israel, the war of war between Israel and Iran and its effect on British Jewry. The heightened suitability of one candidate to deal with this effectively. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. Gosh, all the clocks are buzzing Thank around you. there. Um, I will again invite questions. If we can have some hands, and I'll take three by three to stand by the microphone. So, yes, thank you very much. Do come up. And at the back, can't see who's... Yes? Su is, no, I don't think it's Susan. No, do come, do come forward. Thank you very much. Yes, uh, gentleman with striped shirt. Thank you. Where? No, where's Susan? Oh, I can see her. Susan, you'll be next. Hi. Susan, do come up and be number four. There we are. Good morning. Bobby Garson, Menorah Synagogue, Bobby. Manchester. Uh, you, together with the other candidates, have said you will be the voice of the board. Uh, the times I have attended these meetings, the board is very often very divided, certainly in its plenary meetings. How will you determine what the voice is? Bobby, you're quite right. We do have many diverse views. It's the job of the board to represent all those views and to listen to them all with respect. We are never all going to agree on, anything, on everything, but it is really important. <laughs> Freudian slip. I'm allowed it today, once. Um, but we know, as president, I have shown that I can be collegiate and bring people together and listen to people and other people under my presidency would have that respect because we all have a view and we are all entitled to make it. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, Stanley Volk, uh, Fringely Progressive Synagogue. Uh, you expressed, Marie, uh, a strong view about negotiating strong, robust talks with the Jeremy Corbyn yes. and the Labour Party. Uh, yesterday at my synagogue we had a, a, dis a discussion before the service re-antisemitism uh, and a, a view was dis uh, expressed that the conditions to talk to Jeremy Corbyn were too stringent and, okay. and that is why uh, uh, they're not happening. As a new president, would you prepare to negotiate and discuss uh, the, those conditions? Thank you. It is the sitting down with Jeremy Corbyn again and again and again and to make preconditions which would stop us doing that, I would not support. We need to be round a table, we need to see where he's prepared to support us and look at the areas where he's not prepared to support us. Because there were like ten, ten points, so you discuss that. Absolutely. Thank you very Thank much. You. Uh, Carrie Lambeth, UJS. Hi, Carrie. Um, you've rightly spoken about the diversity of voices on the board. Um, how will you work effectively with groups that you may not agree with, such as Yahad? Absolutely. It's in our constitution, Kerry, that we have to admit, um, accept applications for any Jewish group. And then, of course, if they're not elected by their organisations, it is the deputies, a two-thirds majority, which would allow that organisation to be part of the board. And we have to listen to everybody's views. But... There are red lines across which people must not go, otherwise we would not have them as part of our organisation and they would have to leave, okay? People who call Israel a steaming pile of sewage would not be allowed to stand at that microphone and voice their opin opinions, okay? But otherwise, absolutely, everybody is entitled, representing a Jewish organisation, to air their views and have them heard. Thank you. Susan Pascoe, Nairstrow Community. Susan. We have a wealth of talent amongst our deputies within the board. How do you propose to utilise the skills of all deputies, um, even those not on divisions? Thank you. Thank you, Susan. You've brought up a really interesting question. 
and something that I have been really worried about all the time I have been a deputy. We have nearly 300 deputies and we do not utilise their skills. On my own division, we were desperate for a lawyer to advise our education department on a contract that needed to be drawn up so as the Home Office would provide £27,000 worth of funding for the Jewish Living Experience exhibition to be based in Newcastle. We spent months trying, running around, trying to find a deputy with that experience and we failed. Deputies, at the beginning of every triennium, you are asked to complete a skills form, which should make up a database of skills, a skills register that the board should hold. Every time you're a new deputy, when new deputies come, we fill in this information. And what happens to it? Zero. We had somebody employed at the beginning of the last triennium to start completing this skills register, and he left when his contract finished. Under my presidency, Every deputy's skill will be recorded and we will no longer have a situation where we don't know where to go to draw on the amazing skills and knowledge that we all have here and that makes up the Board of Deputies of which we can be proud. Thank you. Um, uh, Stephen Games, Richard Cohen, and is that Amos? Amos, do come at the next three. Thank you. That'd probably be what we've got time for. Richard, Richard. Cohen Loughton, can I invite you to finish what you were saying about Iran, please? Oh, thank you, Richard. Do you know, I have to say, because of the situation over the last few days, um, I didn't actually have this incorporated into my previous presentations in the hustings. And before I run out of time, thank you. Finally, in these hustings, reference has repeatedly been made to the strong possibility of war between Israel and Iran, its effect on British Jewry and the heightened suitability of one candidate to deal with this effectively. Let me be very clear, in no way will I ever allow the board to revert to the posture of inaction that took place in 2014 over Gaza. I promise to drive home the real issues at every opportunity and I shall defend each and every one of us at all times. Thank, Thank you. you. Stephen. Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you. Uh, Stephen Games from Muswell Hill. Stephen. Hello. Um, I was looking at the makeup of the campaign against anti-Semitism the other day and it, uh, discovered that the balance of MPs is five to one in favour of Conservatives. There is, I think, only one uh, Labour MP. How, do you, how would you make sure, as President of the Board, that in your very necessary work against anti-Semitism and all the other candidates to speak about the same thing, you do not represent the Board as looking like uh, a wing of the Conservative Party? Thank you. Very interesting question. Can I first say that we have to root out anti-Semitism in whatever political party it comes? I understand that, okay? but that's not, that's not my question. And really, at this moment, since Jeremy Corbyn has been elected, it has been allowed to flourish in the Labour Party. So, as a president, I'm not going to go after anti-Semitism in the Conservative Party because the Conservative government is the one that supports us as Jews in this country with funding for our security. And while... And while it is endemic in the Labour Party, I'm afraid they are the people we have to go after. But you know, it's not just within the Labour Party, there are other areas within our community where anti-Semitism is virulent and we have to cross all divides and go after it whichever way we can, relentlessly, tenaciously, robustly and articulately. Thank you. Um, if you could Hi. bear in mind that Sheila will only have 12 seconds to I'll answer the direct quick, question. Amos. I'll speed up for you. Thank Fine. you. Uh, Amos Johnfield, uh, Deputy for Yachad. I want to return to the question we heard earlier. Yes. You, in, in discussing whether Yachad was an organisation that was quoted just was. now, and in your response you quoted um, an organisation or a, a, a phrase that has never been uttered by anyone associated with Yachad. In that, you're, you're starting to push my organisation into, into a corner that it does not belong in. I, as, a, as in my brief career, have devoted my entire career to working to improve Israel education. And it hurts, it de deeply hurts when you do something like that. So I'm really stuck at a point now where I don't know whether you don't understand Zionism or don't understand Yachad. So for my direct question, I'll give you, because you've got 12 seconds. Sure, sure. If elected, 
to either of, the, either of the positions you're running for, will you sit down with me, the students I work with, and my staff in order to, so you can properly understand the work that we do? Thank you. I apologise if I inf made the, inf uh, if you inferred from what I said that I attributed those statements to Yahad. Absolutely, I will sit down with you and anybody else because that's what I do. Thank you. <laughs> well, thank you again. Thank you, Sheila. And thank you, uh, deputies. Just Sheila does already know candidates who are for president and vice president, which is Sheila and Edwin, will not be speaking a second time. So you, you have heard them. Thank you, uh, deputies. Before we go further, I really would like to offer the most heartfelt welcome to Flo Kaufman a previous officer of this board for 12 years. <laughs> Flo, you have undergone, we know, some extremely challenging times and treatment. The good wishes uh, of the board go with you for the future, and we are so delighted to see you here. Except is the next candidate who I invite to address you is Simon Hochhauser, Deputy for South Hampstead Synagogue. I was about to say good morning, uh, President and Deputies, but I can think I can just about say good afternoon. The last three weeks, certainly the last two weeks, have been some of the most tiring that I can remember. We have been on the stump up and down the country. Uh, together, debating with deputies, with members of the community. We have been on the email, answering questions, we've been on the telephone. And it's been quite an exhilarating period, but very, very tiring. So tiring that even today, I feel a little bit like a member of the House of Lords who fell asleep during a long debate and dreamt that he was giving a speech in the House of Lords, only to wake up and find that he actually was. It, <laughs> It's been a little bit like Groundhog Day, but in fact I probably could repeat a lot of the speeches that I heard back there in the hustings, but I'm sure people gave a different account of themselves today. Now, just seven weeks ago, many of us stood in Parliament Square and we all said, in front of Houses of Parliament, we said, enough is enough, Dayenu. And that was a process which was led by our very own president here, the spokes, the person who fronts the community together with the chair of the JLC, and they made this statement, and it led to a process which I believe ended, certainly phase one ended, with the people of Barnet and indeed Salford and Hale and other areas saying to the Labour Party and being repeated time and time again that Dayenu, enough is enough, must speak kvar. This was a message that went out loud and clear. It's not only that. We saw last week how Israel reacted to an attack on itself. Now, none of us could if particularly have foresaw, foreseen what went on before the presidential elections over the last nine years. Johnny, when he came into office, he could not possibly have foreseen the Labour and anti-Semitism. Indeed, Corbyn hadn't even been elected at that time. Certainly, his predecessor, Vivian Wyman, could not have foreseen the Gaza war and the effect that that would have on our community. And indeed, Henry Grunwald would not have been able to know in advance that he would be dealing with a situation arising from the war in Lebanon. And none of us can predict what's going to happen over the next three years, but we can be pretty sure that there will be a crisis that the leader of this community is going to have to confront on behalf of us all. The situation with Iran is very, very fraught. And I want to say on behalf of all of us here, kol hakavod litzahal. Thank you, Tzahal, for everything that you have done and you do for us all in Israel and in the diaspora. On this, the 51st Yom Yerushalayim, when we commemorate the reunification of Jerusalem, well, Jerusalem is going to be in the news quite a lot this year. And one of the reasons it's going to be is because of another congratulations we need to send to the winner of the Eurovision Song Contest. <laughs> this is the public face of the community. We have a responsibility, ladies and gentlemen, 
We have a responsibility, all of us, when we elect the President, which goes above all the areas that we all agree on. And frankly, you could put a piece of rice paper between the issues that we debated at the hustings, because we mostly agree on those issues. And we all have fantastic track records. I've been six years on this board. I've served on the Finance and Organisation Committee three years as its Vice Chair. I co-chaired a paper on the role of the Deputy unanimously adopted last June in this hall. Um, I co-chair Mila UK and have appeared on television so often and on the radio in order to defend this vital mitzvah that is so dear to all of us for millennia. So this is the public face of the community and this is a responsibility we all have. I have a record of appearing on television over many years. I have been in community in senior positions over many years and that has required me to stand up and defend our practices and defend those things that we hold dear, whether it's on television, whether it's on the internet, whether it's on the radio, whether it's in article. I'm used to it, I'm used to doing so under pressure, I'm used to doing so by marshalling the facts that I have in my mind and I can stand up to the John Snows of this world under a barrage of questioning and I'm able to answer those questions on all our behalfs and to fight and to represent our community very strongly and that is really ultimately what this is all about. I would ask you, ladies and gentlemen, all that's gone before Put out of your mind your personal politics. Put out of your mind, if you can, the, the politics that you think we represent, rightly or wrongly. I would ask you not necessarily to vote according to the allegiances you feel you have to. Even promises that you may have made. The most important issue today is the leader. I promise you I will bring this to this position skill, motivation and vision and I will give three years of very hard work to the wonderful community that has nurtured me and, produced and, and has produced such wonderful people here sitting in this hall today. Thank you very much. Um, Shelley Salter and um, a deputy from Radler reform. Yes, sorry. Yes, do come forward. Thank you. And Col is that Colin Lang? I see. So would the three of you like to come? Lawrence Brass. Uh, no, it's not Lawrence. It's Paul Edlin. Do come make number four. Thank you. Yes, two seconds will be added to Simon's time. Uh, Shelley. Um, Shelley Salter, the Liberal Synagogue, St John's Wood. Um, Simon, if we can win the Eurovision Song Contest, where is the anti-Semitism? As I said earlier, we've addressed anti-Semitism. We will continue to address anti-Semitism in all its forms. Where is anti-Semitism? We're never going to dis we're never going to destroy this evil. But we will fight on, we'll fight on wherever it occurs, whether it's in politics, whether it's to the right, whether it's to the left, whether it's in the football grounds, we will make a point of fighting anti-Semitism at all times, yes. Lana Young, Radlett Reform Synagogue. Simon, if you found the hustings tiring, how will you cope with three years of presidency? <laughs> We all find it tiring. Why should we not find it tiring? I will find three years very, very tiring, and so what? I found the six years that I was president of the United Synagogue very tiring. It didn't stop me doing the work, and I will do the work very cogently. Thanks for the question. Uh, Colin Lang, Birmingham Hebrew Congregation. Uh, in reciting the work that you did for the board uh, recently, you did not refer to your work on the working group dealing with the restructuring of the board. Uh, among the proposals that you yourself uh, presented to us on the last occasion was effectively that the executive committee should be abolished. Do you still hold with that ridiculous idea? It is ridiculous and I never presented it. Paul Edlin, Glasgow Jewish Representative Council and Chair of the Board's Regional Council. Uh, Simon, in this current triennial, the Regional Council, which is the Regional Deputies, came up with a proposal for mentoring by larger communities for smaller communities to deal with such major issues as anti-Semitism, boycott and boycott dissemination and sanctions against Israel. We failed to get the necessary funding in this triennial from the Treasurer and we will probably want to extend this and try again next triennial to try and get this essential service provided. We have it in place without funding and it cannot be effective. As president, 
Would you do your best to ensure that the funding, which is a relatively small sum, probably it's a three-figure sum, not a four-figure sum, would you do your best to ensure and insist that this process was adhered to? Paul, I know how strongly you feel, and we all feel, on the need for mentoring. I'm not going to promise any funding for any proposal today because it's necessary for us to sit down and look at our, our priorities. But I do put this personally at the top of my priorities, but that doesn't mean to say I can steamroll it through. What I would say on mentoring, ladies and gentlemen, is something we picked up in Glasgow. Mentoring is two way. We can learn a lot from the Glasgow community about how they, for well over 10 years, have had to confront political anti Semitism in a way that we in London are only just learning about. Mentoring works both ways, and I do appreciate that, Paul. Thank you. Um, I see Jerry Lewis and uh, where's Nathan? Nathan Baroda. Yes. And is that uh, Anthony? Yeah. Do come forward, please. And Howard, you make up number four. And I'll next if it's time. All right. Howard Erdogan has been a synagogue. As a deputy for United Synagogue, what would you do to try and bring the Haredim into the board? And also, how can we be sure that the views of those strands of Judaism less orthodox than United Synagogue are properly reflected and heard? Howard, that's two questions. Haredim is a complicated issue, and I know very, very well half my family is very embedded within the Haredi community, and I work very, very closely with all branches of the Haredi community, from Satma to Bells to Bobov, and indeed the Union of Orthodox Hebrew Congregations, and have done so over my complete communal career. There is a problem with drawing them formally into the Board of Deputies because of their perceived relationship with the progressive communities. The way to do it is to build trust, and that is what we've been doing over recent uh, years, and certainly over recent months, defending Brit Milah on the issue of and most recently on the issue of the uh, coroner and the uh, need for uh, the, the need to respect burial, very very fast burials. Um, there is an issue cropping up right now regarding the uh, Das Israel um, Housing Association. That's something we need to. I will look at with them if I'm elected and help them. By building trust, we bring them in on non-religious uh, uh, people who are not necessarily affiliated to religious organisations or those that feel generally disaffiliated. I have said quite categorically on the hustings and generally that we need to look for ways of including them in the work of the board, maybe allowing them to elect directly to the board of deputies through groups like WhatsApp, etc., and allowing them to contribute, because sometimes non-affiliation and increasingly amongst the young people, non-affiliation is an issue of getting them to be included. But I will fight very, very hard that we widen our franchise. Jerry. Jerry Lewis, Hampstead Synagogue. Mr. Hockhauser, I've only risen because of your reply to Colin Lang a few minutes ago. My recollection and his recollection, and I think many of us recollection, was simply that you did present some proposals which included a number which were heavily defeated by this board. And I worry that you might begin to seek to reintroduce them. This is the Bible, the constitution of our board. Many of the rules about this election I wrote. Can we have an assurance that you would abide by the rules of the board and if any changes are going to be made to the constitution, you will accept them? Thank you. Uh, I can give you that utter assurance, Mr. Lewis, because the Bible, although it's not this is not a Bible because our Bible doesn't get changed in that way, but we can vote for changes to the Bible. <laughs> And if it's so voted, and there's no other way of getting changes here, so actually your question is a very good question, but I can agree with you. There is one point I want to make, though. I was chair of the working group on the role of the deputy, as I mentioned earlier. Um, Howard Adunas, who asked a question earlier, when I co-authored that paper, we will work very hard, if I'm elected, to actually give uh, deputies the ability to improve their role here in the Board of Deputies. Nathan Baroda, Union of Jewish Students. I just wondered what your plans are about how to get more young people involved in the board. Thank you, Nathan. Um, you and I have chatted and we've talked about it. I, uh, the most important thing for us is to listen to what you have to say and how you would like to get involved in the board because the problem is, and this has been a problem throughout, we talk a lot to and about but not enough from. We need to listen to you, um, that's the UJS in particular. We've worked very closely with UJS in the past. Uh, I know that young people can be a bit reticent about being involved in an organisation which they perceive to be one of older people. I remember what it was like and probably many of you do when you were very young, whether you would have got involved with the board of deputies. 
will make everything and anything available, any time available, any technology available, any methodology available to include young people. Because we need young people, we have to have young people, and not just because of the trite reason they are our tomorrow, because we actually need them today. Thank you, Nathan. Good afternoon. Uh, Anthony Feather, West London Synagogue. Um, also a point of the Constitution, as a, a question of information, does the President have the right to appoint people onto executive positions on the division and so on? If that's the case, can you tell me who you might appoint? And if you will give an undertaking, that, that person will be allowed to represent themselves at a board meeting and get the endorsement in a democratic way? Thank you, Anthony. I'm not sure that I'm an expert on these matters, but I don't think that the President can appoint people ad hominem to committees, and I would oppose any move so to do, because I believe in democracy right the way, up and down, top to bottom, in this organisation. Thank Good. you. Thank you. Anthony Epstein, Hadleywood Jewish Community. As President, how would you encourage young members of the community to become deputies? Anthony, I'll just refer you quickly to the answer I gave earlier, because it sounds a bit like Parliament, this. Um, but the reason is because that's the way to do it. We have to listen to the way they want to engage. Some of the younger people, even deputies, don't want to come to turgid meetings at 5.30 in the evening. We'll find other ways of including them. Technology today, which I'm very, very much involved in my, person, in my business life, technology today allows us to include young people, including deputies, in the work of the board without them necessarily have to follow the rules that we've had up to now. Thank you for your question, Anthony. 37 seconds left for, so we've probably got time for one question. Jonathan Davies. Jonathan Davies, Golders Green United Synagogue. From your experience on, on the Mila campaign and also defending Shakita, do you agree that on many issues, we, especially in an age of secularization, we have many common interests with the Muslim community and shouldn't allow the politics of the Middle East to get in the way of working with the Muslim community defending religious rights? Jonathan, I absolutely agree. And indeed, I recently was on a panel together with Muslim practitioners of Mila in which we defended our practice and the the Muslim practice. We did not cover the areas of the Middle East and it never got in the way. Thank you. Time for another question, I think, Mr. President. Uh, Robert, you're very time for your question. If it's time, Laura. Robert Sachs, Belfast Square Synagogue. All the deputies speak, of, all the candidates speak of fighting anti Semitism. There's a great deal of hate crime that is not dealt with by the Board of Deputies. It is dealt with by other bodies, such as UK Lawyers for Israel, Stand With Us, and so on. What will you do to ensure that we, the deputies, can be trained to be involved in bringing prosecutions against hate crimes? Thank you. Thank you very much for that. Well, we're already involved to a degree, and we can expand the work that we do with other organizations to fight against discrimination and hate wherever it occurs. A, because it's wrong in principle, and B, because it has a knock-on effect on us. It's not just prosecution. It's how to stand up, how to debate, how to put your views across. That is something we need to do. We need to train people in media training. It's a long process, and we will never finish, finish it. Hate will always be a feature of public life. Thank you. Well, thank you again, deputies, for those questions. Thank you, Simon Hochhauser. And the fourth presidential candidate, who I will now invite to address you, is Marie van der Zyl. Marie, Marie, you'll have five minutes, and can you see the screen on your right? It'll uh, count down. I certainly can. And um, at the end of that time, uh, I will stop you, and if there's any time within the five that you finish, that'll be added on to your time for answering questions, which will be five minutes, 
and uh, the time of the questions will not be counted, just the time of your answers. So Marie, uh, when you're ready, thank you very much indeed. Good afternoon, deputies. I'm incredibly proud this board has stood up for our Jewish way of life for over 250 years. Today, I stand here on my record. As Vice President for the Defence and Interfaith Religion, I've been responsible for some of the most crucial issues our community has had to face. Let me give you three examples. I successfully negotiated with the London School of Economics their acceptance of the IHRA definition of anti-Semitism. This was following their suggestion to implement an unacceptable alternative. I was also the first person to call out the Shami Chakrabarti report for what it was, a whitewash. You can see my quote in Wikipedia. And most importantly, in just the last few weeks, we've seen the landmark High Court victory in the coroner's case. The introduction of the cab rank rule by Mary Hassel was declared unlawful, discriminatory, and incapable of rational justification. On behalf of the entire Jewish community, I successfully orchestrated the board's campaign bringing together politicians of all parties, including the Prime Minister and other public figures, to attack this unjust policy. This was no easy task. However, I was able to rely upon my 27 years of legal skills, judgment and insight as an employment lawyer and partner in a well-known law firm. This victory clearly confirms my credentials. As a result of the coroner's case, I've been able to deepen my own and the board's working relationship with the Haredi community. Bringing people together, including other communal organisations, is essential for the board's future in defending the attacks on our rights, practices and way of life. As president, I would carry on resolving these issues, however complicated or challenging they may be. I've often been quoted in the press about anti-Semitism. I've given numerous TV and radio interviews, and I'm widely known to today's politicians. I've been representing you and the community. And I've proudly undertaken this work, no matter how many hours it's taken, training indeed to be the next board president. We must also celebrate Jewish life and reach out to unaffiliated Jews and young people. I want to champion the amazing contributions the British Jewish community makes to society to continue to enhance social cohesion amongst other faith communities and to advance our special relationship with Israel. Israel's security, welfare and standing are at the heart of our constitution and in my heart too. Wasn't it wonderful that Netta won last night? But I am particularly concerned by the threat of Iran and its allies to the well-being of Israel and also to the diaspora communities. I launched my manifesto online, setting out my vision for the next three years. Actions do speak louder than words. I've clearly demonstrated this through my achievements. Deputies, I'm a fighter. As a young mother, I fought against cancer. I won, and winning this battle made me want to do more for our community. The recent anti-Semitism debate in Parliament clearly shows that there'll be many more battles to fight. I'll keep the pressure up on Jeremy Corbyn and others in the Labour Party, however long it takes. If I'm elected president, I'll continue the fight against anti-Semitism. I'll defend Israel celebrate its achievements, strengthen interfaith relationships and protect our Jewish way of life. In other parts of Europe, from Iceland to Poland, Britmila and Shechita are under threat. I will not let that happen here. I would be a listening president, ready and willing to listen to deputies' views and concerns before taking crucial decisions. 
serving as your vice president, you've seen, I've demonstrated, I've stood up to anti-Semitism. As your president, I will stand up for you and our community. Thank you. There'll be two seconds added on, the answers. So I see Flora Frank and Lawrence Brass, Vicky Harris and Ruth Friedman. Do you all want to go to the microphone, please? Flora. Good afternoon. Um, unfortunately, Flora Frank, British m and unfortunately, as we all well know, Israel has many detractors, critics, and even amongst our own people, especially on the subject of the treatment of our Arab neighbours, with whom we have to get along and look after, the building projects and so on and so forth. We cannot afford to be divisive. If we, the Jewish people, do not support Israel, who will? And I'm asking you if you can sincerely assure us, the community, that you will not speak out de detrimentally against Israel. And I want to ask you, will you continue in the vein of our wonderful President, Jonathan Arcus, who has a sense of history, a sense of duty, and has been unwavering in his loyalty and support of Israel in an objective and a professional manner? Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much for the question. I hope that you could feel from my speech that I was very open that Israel is at the heart of my identity as a Jew, as it is to many, many Jews. Our constitution in section 3C specifically provides that the welfare of Israel, its standing, must be something that we must promote. It's absolutely our duty to promote a sensitive and positive uh, outlook for Israel, particularly in relation to its security position. I do not believe that we should be uh, criticizing the policies of Israel, and I absolutely believe that we must put Israel in the best possible light, fight BDS and any attempts to delegitimize Israel. I'm firmly for defending Israel. Lawrence Brass. Uh, Bushy United. Tomorrow morning, Ivanka Trump will open the new U.S. Embassy in Jerusalem. <laughs> Many people throughout the world, and certainly in Europe and the U.K., feel this is a provocative and a measure which will set back the peace process. Our president in December warmly welcomed this provocative act, and surprisingly, the senior vice president very warmly welcomed it. Had you been president in December, would you have welcomed it as well? I can give you a very straightforward answer to that. Um, I, would, I would have consulted, and I would not have made a statement about it. I think this is a matter for, for the Israeli government, but I would, not have, I would probably not have made something that's divisive. But I personally do think it's very, it's very good that America, followed by some of the South American countries, have accepted Jerusalem as the capital. And that's the right of Israel to choose its own capital. Ruth Friedman, very newly elected, re-elected re to the Pinner Synagogue. Congratulations. As a deputy. Uh, Marie, what specifically is your strategy for dealing with Jeremy Corbyn and the Labour Party? <laughs> Thank you. Right, there is no, the strategy is, there is no easy solution to this problem. This is something that's going to be an issue that's ongoing. In the short term, in the letter of the 28th of March, the board and the JLC asked Jeremy Corbyn to comply with some basic requirements. Some of, some of those were ex expelling uh, Ken Livingstone and Jackie Walker, so we're waiting to see in the short term whether that happens following Mark Wadsworth. There's also the acceptance of the IHRA definition and the examples, because Labour are now contending that they haven't accepted the examples. There's also trying to ensure that MPs do not share platforms with anyone who's been accused 
of anti-Semitism. So we have to wait and see, following perhaps the first meeting, which was a disappointment, what Labour are going to do by the end of July as promised. Then there's also the question of the hundreds of disciplinary cases. We have to keep the pressure up. We have to, within the Labour Party, outside the Labour Party, with all our friends and the media, take every opportunity to challenge any aspects of anti-Semitism, use every single parliamentary debate, inquiry, select committee to continue to take this issue up. The IHRA definition is a very important part of the education that we need to look through and only 118 authorities at present have accepted the definition but not all of the examples. So I think there is a lot of work to do but I don't think you should be expecting a speedy response. Vicky Harris, Hampstead Garden Suburb Synagogue, representing that synagogue in this triennium and um, I'm happy to say in the next triennium. I'm old but the future lies with my grandchildren and my children. Marie, I believe you have had something to say about young people quite aside from the work that you've done on campuses. Can you elaborate a little bit on how you would encourage more young people to play a greater part in this auspicious organisation? I think it's very important that we have the next generation of leaders and that we here take responsibility for that. When the elections have been completed, I would like to ask the gender equality officer to do a survey so that we can see what groups of people are unrepresented, underrepresented. That might be, for example, people that are younger or it might be, for example, women. I would then want to have three extra places on the executive whereby those people can actually have a say in the running of the organisation so they're not token, they're not just being consulted but they've got a part to play in the running of the board. We've also got some wonderful youth organisations. I'm for example um, representing the JLGB and I would like to consult all of the youth organisations to have a youth strategy to find a way that we can engage and the young people have to tell us what they want, but some ideas might be to re-establish a youth council that used to exist many years ago. The board could play uh, a part in that. Or the other thing I put in my manifesto was to consider having a youth plenary. So we really need to, we do need to find ways to engage, and that's, that I think is absolutely essential. But by treating young people as tokens, that's not going to take us any further. And if we have debates, for example, on organ donations, could have been a good one last time, that will make the board relevant and will want people to come here. And I think that that's a very important part, that they feel that they can debate the issues of the day here. Thank you. Uh, yes, at the back with the blue shirt, Right, probably just time for one question, because you've got 17 seconds for Marie to answer. But if there is time, uh, then I'll ask Sydney. <clears throat> OK, so I apologise in advance that I'm going to race through your answer. That's OK. Uh, Ray Langer, Deputy for UJS. Um, JLGB, as you now represent, is a great organisation that empowers young people. But do you not feel by taking, by becoming one of their deputies, are you not taking a spot by, one of, by a young person who is underrepresented here? They've never had, they've never had a, a young person as a deputy. They've only had older deputies. I took the place of an older deputy and there is now they've found a 20-year-old who I will be coaching. JLGB is a charity. It's a family organisation, not a youth movement. And adults, teachers and parents all have youth at the centre. Well, deputies, I thank Marie, deputy for JLGB. That completes the presidential hustings. Each of the candidates for vice president will have four minutes to speak and four minutes to answer questions. 
Same rules as before, any unused time in speaking will be added on to the answers for questions. The order in which the Vice President's candidates will be speaking... <laughs> I've lost my piece of paper. Anyone help me? Well, I know it's Kim Cohn first. So <laughs> Kim, <laughs> if you don't That's need to matters. know who's That's number two to, two to nine, when, Kim, you're ready, uh, you'll see the screen will tick down the four minutes. I won't say anything until you've reached ground zero when I will stop right. you. And that's what I will do with all the following candidates. So, ladies and gentlemen, Kim Cohen, deputy for Northwood United Synagogue. Mr. President, honorary officers, my fellow deputies, honored guests, in less than four minutes, I want to tell you why you should consider voting for me as Vice President and what I can actually uh, offer. Firstly, I'd like to applaud the work of the last board and the fantastic successes they've had over the last three years, and that's given us a real platform in the community. Who am I? I'm a business strategy, a strategist, and I've worked in very, very large companies, and I want to try and impress you as to why that's relevant to me standing for vice president of this board. I've worked a lot across different sectors, different um, continents, and I was head of Co group head of strategy and planning in a very large company of 100,000 people, engineering company, 12 divisions, and I was tasked with bringing to the board, the main board, the plans for and strategies for discussion amongst no more than 10 directors. So with 100,000 people, 12 organizations, how do you distill that down and come back down to what is important for the main board of the company to discuss. Some of these individual constituents were very large companies in their own right. And that was a discipline that I learnt, and I learnt through experience that um, how you develop strategic skills in such large organisations, how you distill them down to what's important. Coming onto the Board of Deputies, I didn't really know what to expect, and one of the things that I, I was looking for is, you know, is everybody um, here cohesive? Do we have, you know, motivated teams working on various aspects of uh, board policy? And in some ways, what I found was that really, as was said earlier, that there are so many views here, there are so many different aspects, there are so many different interests, that it's very hard to understand where the board is going at any one time, but the board does react when it's asked to and is very strong and robust in its response to such issues as um, anti-Semitism, and I'll come on to my manifesto. In working in the aerospace industry, what I found was very often I was the only Jew and in a very visible position. And that strengthened my uh, awareness of the importance of interfaith work. And I want to see here a united voice. My um, contribution to the board as a vice president would be in having a shared mission, vision, and values, and a strategy. What I have heard up till now is we have three strategies, three divisions, three strategies, four divisions, four strategies, and four plans. I want to wash all of that away. I want to have one plan, one vision, and how would I do that? I would want each one of you as a deputy here to take part in forming that vision, in formulating that vision, so that we have a united vision. So we can all have different aspects of, uh, of different views, but we must have a shared vision. And that would help very much to bring in new people when they come in or they ask any um, deputy here, anywhere in, in the UK, what's the Board of Deputies about? It's about we have a shared vision, this is what we do. And what I'd like to, uh, to do is very much be the catalyst on the board that brings together the vice presidents with the president to formulate those plans with your help and to bring about a change in the approach of the Board of Deputies. I'd like the Board of Deputies to be seen to be leading the Jewish voice. The difficulty I think we have is we have another organization that is doing extremely well, the Jewish Leadership Council. It is really more a Jewish Welfare Council. We need to work with them closely, but we need to understand... Right, thank you.
<laughs> Thank you very much. I shall invite questions uh, for Kim Cohen. Do I see any questions? Any questions there? Jonathan Davies, yes. Do come to the microphone, Jonathan. Any other questions? Anyone who hasn't yet asked a question? Uh, yes, David, please. Uh, Deanna? Right, Jonathan. Jonathan Davis, Golders Green. Which of the three divisions would you wish to lead and why? Very good question. Um, I've kept an open mind um, because I'd like to actually say, and I hope this is, uh, you take this genuinely, that I could actually um, be effective in any of the three divisions. The important thing, this is what I'm really stressing, is I would like the divisions to work as a team. And therefore, if, for instance, I'm consigned a division that I wouldn't perhaps have wanted as my first uh, um, uh, choice, I would want the, the whole board to work as a team. And that's the way we've got to start thinking now. We've got to start thinking teamwork, not I did this, I achieved that, I achieved um, the, the following. I think what we have to reckon is that um, the landscape at the moment is um, Israel um, and uh, anti-Semitism. It's the landscape, it's the background in which we operate. I don't believe that in any one of these divisions we're going to solve the, the, the issue of anti-Semitism or the support for Israel. I think the only way that we can operate in the future is to start looking more as a combined and effective team. And every point that you touch, the Board of Deputies, everyone knows exactly what um, the, the vision is, the mission is, is and the strategy, and then we can debate it at will. But having 300 people debating um, every issue and the Constitution is very difficult. Only if we have a shared vision and we have a shared strategy that we all buy into, and there will be different options within those strategies that we can debate. But we can't move forward on that. So I would like to, in answering your question, sorry, in a lengthy way, I don't think that I would limit myself and say, I'll only do this, or I'll only do that. I have to be part of the team, and I will do what's required of me, and I will give you the very best of my skills in that. David. <coughs> David C. Lowe, from the Hope Progressive Synagogues. If you were the uh, Vice President in charge of communities, could you explain a bit further how you would support the Jewish communities outside London, the various ones we have in Manchester, uh, at Glasgow, and also our very small communities all across the, across the, the UK? Well, thank you for that question. I have first-hand experience. Uh, I was um, a Hasmo boy. I went to Hasmonean and was in northwest London, never been out of northwest London, and decided to go to Bath University, um, which had no Jews, or I thought had no Jews. I started a, an Israel society and found there were six Jews, three students and three full professors. And that's the way it started. I think the importance here, and I brought a chaplain in from um, the universities, um, uh, the central universities body. And we started then to inter interact with other universities, Bristol, Exeter, in that area. And we started to form a group. What I see at the moment is that, obviously, and this is uh, demographics, something like 60% of the Jewish population is based around London, 40% um, all over in regions. And then if you uh, take Manchester, it starts to get very, very fragmented. I think the important thing that I'd like to do, firstly, is to get around the patch. The second thing is to make sure that when we have these sessions of trying to bind ourselves to vision and mission and, and values, a lot of those are going to be how do we support um, those small communities? Because at the moment, we don't really want to be forced back into London and then basically uh, London is the only Jewish base. Um, we really want to try and grow now in the regions. I think what we're seeing is Haredi is growing in the regions, and that is an issue I'd very much like to address, that we also have to try and be inclusive in some way. Deanna. Thank you. Deanna Levine. I represent B'nai B'rit UK on the board. Um, you were cut off at the end of what you were saying. You didn't get a chance to complete it. Um, but before I ask you to do so, could you bear in mind that the JLC 
the Jewish Leadership Council, self-appointed at great cost um, to each of its members, member organizations. Um, I'd like to know what it was you were going to say because I find it a difficult one. Thank you. Right. Um, it is a very difficult one. Thank you very much for that, for that question. What I was going to say about the Jewish Leadership Council is that we've got that history, the 250-year history. We've actually been a very valued, the, the valued voice of, of Judaism in the UK in a very short space of time and obviously with funding and I was going to say something about it is important to have funding. I'm looking at this as a business. I'm looking at the Board of Deputies as having a business side which says if we want to do all the things we want to do we have to be better funded. That is one of the challenges I have. But coming back to, to your question, I see the Jewish Leadership Council more... Oh, sorry. Sorry, okay. I have to keep to the okay. time. It's the same for right. all candidates, okay, so I sure. have to stop you. Kim Cohn, Deputy for Northwood United Synagogue. Okay. Thank you very much. Yes, yes. Right, okay. Uh, deputies, the candidate uh, up next, Amanda Bowman, Deputy for uh, Hampstead United Synagogue. While we're waiting for Amanda, there is a ballot box open for vice presidential candidates if anyone is unable to remain. I'm not quite sure with the location of the ballot box. Is it at the back? Ah, uh, yes, standing right there in the, yep, at the back, back of the hall where Marius is, the international affairs officer, who some of you may not have met yet. Marius, would you like to wave to everyone? Thank you. Right, Amanda, you'll have four minutes to speak. Uh, you can see the screen to your right, which will tick down. There will then be four minutes for questions, and anyone who hasn't, uh, if you haven't used up your four minutes, it will be added on to your answers for questions. Thank you. Amanda. There will be no rousing slogans or jokes in the next four minutes. That's just not me. What I am is a strategic operator, someone who listens and consults. In addition, I'm an optimist. Six years ago, when I became a deputy, I did it because I wanted to make a difference. Having got involved from day one, I'm now asking for your support to become vice president. For those who don't know me, I've always lived in northwest London, but I've travelled and worked in my career as a consultant specialising in leadership and international development all around the world. I'm one of the deputies for Hampstead Shaw, and with my husband Anthony, we have two grown-up daughters. As a member of the exec for the last three years, I've contributed to progress, but there's much more to do. My manifesto outlines my objectives, and today I'd like to focus on three key issues, partnerships, inclusivity, and strategic planning. Firstly, partnerships. I believe it's imperative that we bring different groups together to tackle the pressing concerns that, of our community, anti-Semitism, the delegitimization of Israel, and threats to our religious practices. It's only by working together that we'll make progress, and testament to that is our recent partnership with the JLC and the CST, Enough is Enough. We also need strong partnerships between deputies and the exec. Consider what the Community and Education Division has achieved with the Jewish Living Experience. We've worked with deputies, rep councils, and others in eight communities, including Manchester, Lincoln, and St. Albans, and thousands of children from primary schools have been bowled over learning about Judaism, which we believe that long-term will assist in counteracting anti-Semitism. Deputies are our strongest asset. Several have told me that they'd like support for new partnerships in their community. I want us to explore a new idea, a community partnership challenge, to match fund campaigns that align with the board's objectives and meet deputies' local needs. We can work on these projects together, learn from the process, and share experience. Secondly, we need to be more inclusive. Deputies have much to communicate, but they tell me they feel excluded. One from a small community told me she doesn't feel her voice is being heard or her opinion matters. A younger deputy said, that if they do stand up to report on activity, the response in board meetings is dismissive. We need to make the board relevant to those who are currently underrepresented. We need to reach out and engage people more. We need to use technology better 
and we need policies and procedures that are simple to understand and to apply. We all know this is true, we just have to do something about it. Thirdly, we need a strategic plan to guide our work. In 2015, I instigated a plan for the CED. We worked on it together, set goals and milestones, and regularly reviewed progress. It's a model and a reporting framework for all divisions. It's famously said that the best way to predict the future is to create it. Having a plan that we build together gives us the best chance for, to create our future and to raise the money to pay for it. I have the qualities you need for a vice president. I'm strategic, I'm consultative, I'm pragmatic and I'm a partnership builder. What's more, I've demonstrated that I have the ability, determination and energy to deliver. Up to now, you may have known me as the chair of the Board of Deputies Social Action Group or the Gender Equality Champion. Today I've talked about one, how partnerships will help us achieve more, two, the need to make the board more inclusive, and three, how a strategic approach to planning will give us all the outcomes we desire. No rousing slogans, no jokes. Just give me your vote. Thank you. Two seconds will be added on to the time for answering questions. Well, we must be fair. Are there any questions, please, for Amanda? Can I see any hands? Questions for Amanda. Past President Lionel Kopolovitz. Other questions, if people would like to show their hands at this stage? Uh, I can see a hand, but I can't see who's attached to it. Could you stand up, please? All right. Roger, please come forward. Are there any others at this point? Uh, yes, Mark, please come forward. That'll be three for the moment. Lionel. <coughs> Lionel Kroplowitz, past president. Um, I listened very carefully to Amanda Bowman's presentation. She mentioned the executive committee. Well, I'm a permanent member of it as a past president. But I've noticed in the last session in particular, there's been uh, much of the business which, uh, which the executive could deal with has been dealt with by the honorary officers. Could, do you feel there's a special role now for the executive committee? Thanks, Lionel. I believe that uh, the way that the exec runs is really at the gift of the president, and I'm hoping that the new president will seek to engage all of the exec, including those, the, the advice of the past presidents, more in our work. I think there's an, you know, you've got a great team of people um, from the, in the exec, and I think we've all got a lot to offer, and, that we've, and that's why we've been appointed. Uh, Roger? Thank you. First of all, may I say... That Roger, could you just give your name and constituency oh, for Roger the Kuczynski, record? Roger Kaczynski, Bushy... Uh, sorry, Radlett Reform Synagogue. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, Bushy and Radlett. Um, <laughs> Amanda, first of all, may, may I say that it's been a pleasure working with you on BODSA over these last three years. Um, and do you feel, as I do, that BODSA could do with more support from the executive than it has been receiving? And um, how, what particular achievements do you feel that you would like to have remembered as being your work? Thanks, Roger. It's been a pleasure working with you for the last six years on BODSA too. Um, more support from the exec was, your f was the first part of your question. Uh, well, when you vote for me as vice president, you can be absolutely sure that you'll get the support for BODSA from the exec. Um, and I think that we've had the support that we've asked for, to be frank. I think BODSA has become quite a mature group and we work um, aligned with the board's goals. And so with the support of Anthony Silkoff, our officer from the board, uh, we've had good support this year, but more is always helpful. Secondly, what would I be proud of? I think with my co-chair, Stephanie Brada, who's standing down, and I'm really sad that she is standing down this time, but Stephanie and I have um, changed the way BODSA works. So we've been much more focused in what we've been doing, in, and we've sought to align our work with the core mission of the board. Um, and I'm optimistic and hopeful that that will continue as we go forward. Thank you. My name is Mark Edelman. I'm from Lincoln uh, Jewish Community, Lincolnshire Jewish Community. 
Um, how would you facilitate participation for board members who have disabilities who wish to become board members? Thanks, Mark. Um, well, as I expect that most of the other candidates have also said, we want to make the board inclusive for all deputies, whatever ability they, they have. Um, and as you, as you can see here today, since when it's, we've changed the way we're seated um, to support those who had hearing difficulties, who find this, this way of seating more easy to, to consider. Um, however, there's more that we can do. And the first thing, of course, that we would need to do is consult with all deputies to understand what kind of support they would want in that respect. Um, I'd like to see more ways for deputies to be able to get involved with me in meetings it, without actually having to be in the room. It's great to have us all in the room, but if, if you're unable to be here, I'd like to see more use of web conferencing um, and uh, ways for using technology to bring more people into the work of the board. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I saw Karen's hand, so I invite you to any other deputies want to ask questions. Uh, I'll give you one more opportunity when Karen's had her question. Thank you. Uh, Karen Newman, the Liberal Jewish Synagogue. Um, I too, Amanda, have always enjoyed the opportunity of working with you on the various committees where we, we've served together. I've always been impressed by your uh, consultative approach. Um, what I wanted to ask you is that um, a lot of women deputies become involved in the social as action area of work, education. There's no question the value of the significance of that work. But I was wondering if you could give us a feel for where you are on some of the tougher issues like Israel, like anti-Semitism, so that we can get a more rounded picture picture of your candidacy. Thank you. Okay. Well, for those that haven't ploughed through the manif my manifesto, um, let me just give an example from the work that I did, in fact, in the fir my first triennium, uh, where I was part of the Oxfam monitoring group for the project that we did with Oxfam. I was a, a keen and eager young deputy at the time, but um, Unlike others who have said that they haven't been asked to do things that play to their strengths, I think that the board did play to my strengths of bringing um, me on to the committee to allow me to both get in, um, get deep into the issues that we were facing with the Oxfam partnership, which was making sure they didn't cross the red lines, uh, but also to, to use my strategic analysis and the skills that I've had in weighing things up uh, before coming to a decision. Um, and, and also in negotiating, we had some robust discussions within that group. Um, and I think I proved at that point that um, I had some skills that the board needed to use. Thank you. Any more questions for Amanda? Uh, Laura Marks. Uh, Laura Marks, the MRJ. Um, Amanda, you've talked a, bit, a little bit about the living, um, the Jewish living experience. I always forget its name. We changed it. Um, and I'm just wondering whether, you know, it sounds like a nice way of teaching children about, uh, about Jews, but can you tell us uh, why you think the work's important that the CID's been doing in terms of religious education? Does it really make a difference? Thanks, Laura. So, um, there are two parts to that. The work we do in education is split between two areas. It's the work we do to champion faith-based education and particularly, of course, Jewish schools, um, which is critically important. The other side of that is the work that you're talking about, about educating young people and others uh, more broadly about Judaism. When people from any faith get to know someone from another faith, we know that I've run out of time. It's good. It's good to get to know people of other faiths. I'd like to thank Amanda Bowman. Thank you very much. Deputies next is Denise Lester, deputy for South Hampstead Synagogue. And I shall invite Denise to give her presentation.
Japanese, you're going to have four minutes to speak, and the screen on your right will be counting down so you can see it. Mm -hmm. I won't give any interruption uh, until zero is reached if you use up all your four minutes. Any time that you don't use up will be added on to the four minutes which deputies will have to ask you questions, and the answers to the questions, but not the questions, will count in the four minutes. So, Denise, when you're ready. Good afternoon, deputies, and to those listening on live stream. I seek your first preference vote for Vice President so that I can use my experience and skill set to serve the board and our community. I have been a deputy since 1994. That's 24 years. I have extensive experience. I've served on two divisions for many years, the Defence and Interfaith and Communities and Education divisions. Additionally, as an experienced family law solicitor, I have been active for many years on the board's family law group. I have extensive media experience, having been trained by the BBC and the Law Society. I am a national spokesperson for the Law Society, principally on family law matters. In the Jewish media, I'm also on air as a regular contributor to the Jewish views. I also organise the board's contingent to the annual Ajax Remembrance March to the Cenotaph. We must honour those who have fallen fighting for Britain and our way of life. As a solicitor, I have a skill set that means that I swiftly identify, analyse and solve issues. Professionally, I have extensive experience working with government departments on policy and legal matters. I think that the main issues facing our community are anti-Semitism. When I stood at Parliament Square to say is enough is enough, it spurred me to stand here today to seek your vote. Enough is enough. Anywhere. In football, schools, campuses, the workplace, in the media, we must fight anti-Semitism and educate those who do not see it. Israel. Israel, we should give continuous support to Muzzletoff on its 70th anniversary, Muzzletoff on winning the Eurovision, and to anyone that seeks to destroy the state of Israel we should say, no, enough with the missiles from Iran. I seek the following, greater funding for the board. We need more funds to do our great work. Maintaining our international position within the European and worldwide Jewish communities, especially post-Brexit. Giving support to them so they can maintain key practices such as shechita, circumcision and also combat anti-Semitism. I seek real change so that deputies can feel even more involved between meetings and their talent used. I seek greater involvement of younger deputies. There should be a succession strategy as they will be our community's future leaders. More engagement with a dynamic change the board campaign so that their ideas can be shared and if approved implemented. Greater use of communication technology for deputies, promotion of more women deputies. There are still not enough continued interfaith work, working on common issues with other faith communities such as speedy burials, education and promotion of Jewish life across the UK and beyond, keeping students safe on campus, listening to all deputies and their concerns, working with key strategic partners such as the CST, JLC and the Holocaust Educational Trust. We must be strong, promote and protect our community. The board is cross-communal, so am I. I will walk into any synagogue and communal organisation and promote the board. I seek greater involvement of regional deputies. I will stand firm and committed to promote the board and serve the Jewish community. If elected, I will work with all honorary officers I am collaborative, passionate about the board, have vision, substantive experience and the skill set needed. I seek your vote. I stand to serve. Let's stand together at the board. Thank you. Thank you. Three seconds will be added on to the time. Are there any questions, please, for Denise Lester? Any questions? Uh, Flora Frank and Brian Mark. I can see if I missed anyone else. Do come forward. Thank you. Flora. 
for, <coughs> for a frank British Samuna. Janice, you quite rightly said that we need to find more funds for the board. Um, can you tell me, every past president and vice president have agreed with you passionately about it, and it's very, very difficult. We've deliberated how we're going to do it. Have you any ideas? It's a difficult one. I'm not trying to catch you out, but really, how would you go about getting more funds? How would you get more debt, you know, the community to value the work that we do? Well, I think, first of all, our defining moment um, in the last 24 years that I've served was, in fact, the Parliament Square March, which was um, organised and gave us the visibility, and we need to maintain that visibility. In terms of getting funds, I think, frankly, we need to work with the major communal organisations. I know that there is a limited community pot, and I, we need to work and use the database that actually hasn't been um, utilised locally within our deputies and synagogue law organisations so that we develop a more effective fundraising communal strategy. My synagogue happens to support the board and we have some, you know, some substantive donors and we're thankful for that. But there is a reach that we need to reach, including in particular the unaffiliated and those that do not actually That's subscribe. Thank you. Brian. Uh, Brian Mark, Jew student, Chaplaincy, Scotland. Denise, I know you are the spokesman for the Law Society and I read some of your material because it comes to my phone. In family law cases, criminal investigation takes place before the judge makes findings in family law cases. I'm asking you about the Jewish Leadership Council. Before the judge-led inquiry takes place, should there be a proper criminal investigation by the City of London Police. The same way as in family law, you investigate the criminal matters and then you come to the family matters. I'm going to, I'm going to say to you um, that we work with the JLC um, with a strategic partnership that should be continued. It is not for me individually to comment on whatever um, potential um, decision making that the police and the CPS may make or others may make. I'm watching it all play out in the media. Um, it is not for us necessarily to um, step into that fray personally. Um, there, there, is, there, is a, there, there is a distance. I was concerned. I'm extremely concerned about what's happened, but um, I, I, I don't want to interfere. Very clear. Any other questions? Well, if there aren't any other questions, <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you very much. Denise Lester. <laughs> thank you. Get a towel back quickly because we're Deputies, the next candidate will be Tal Offair, the deputy for Chigwell United Synagogue. Chigwell and Hainault. Tal. Right. Tal, you're going to have four minutes to speak. You'll see the screen on your right will be ticking down. Uh, I will not interrupt you. Uh, and you will see for yourself when the clock kicks down to zero. I will then stop you if you're still speaking. Um, there will then be four minutes for you to answer questions. Uh, any time unused of your four-minute presentation will be added on to the time for answering the questions, and the time for asking the questions won't count. So whenever you're ready, four minutes. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, deputies. We read in Parashat Behar about the issue of land ownership and how we entrusting in someone to look after our land. And I think there is a measure that applies for the role of the vice president. Being an honorary officer isn't something for the HO's personal gain. It's about holding a position to benefit you deputies and the whole community. As I decided to stand for vice president, the question that really dominated my mind was not what can I get, but what can I give? I'm standing for election because I have a lot to give on the issues that matter for the community. 
whether it's the fight against anti-Semitism, defending religious freedoms, countering the BDS, and deepening interfaith relations. I have the time, passion, understanding, and experience to deal with all of those key issues. We are inheriting a board in a great shape, thanks to the tremendous work done by the honorary officers. Therefore, it's our duty to maintain that and do even more because the expectations of our community evolve, just as in the e-commerce technology world where I'm coming from, where the expectation of the end consumer is to see same day or next day delivery. It also applies to our community. They want to see us day in, day out, and get things done for them. Why should you vote for me? Having been on the executive committee for the past three years and the Defense and Interfet Relations Division, I have first-hand experience of working with all the honorary officers as a team player. Taking part in shaping the board's policies, it is essential for experience for anyone who wishes to become a vice president. And it's important as well to know and maintain good working relations with the board staff, which I have. As we speak, the tension is rising at Israel's north border, and we can all hope and pray that it's not going to escalate further. But if it does, we need to be ready to stand and defend Israel. As someone who lived in Israel and served three years in the army as an officer, I have a unique perspective and understanding of the reality on the ground. I have done media interviews and articulated Israel's case in previous years, and I am ready to speak up should it be needed. I'm also having a high profile on social media, on Twitter, and have many leading politicians and journalists following me. On anti-Semitism, all the candidates here stress the importance of eradicating it. But I'm the one with the track record. You have read my manifesto how I was dealing with anti-Semitism in the Labour Party already in 2014 under Ed Miliband's leadership, and more recently with Jeremy Corbyn. Dealing with anti-Semitism and protecting religious freedoms isn't just about statements, it's about getting things done. And we can do it by building alliances inside and outside the community. Empowering deputies inside and outside plenaries is essential, and embracing technology, in my view, is key. I bring practical solutions in how getting it done by giving every deputy a board's email address which can help them in the, to carry out their work when they're dealing with politicians, media, and organizations. An online forum where deputies can hold the executive to account and sub-forums to ease the work of the board's divisions. I also pledge to make all plenary documents available online in the interest of transparency. I strongly believe in making the board more inclusive and accessible to Jews from different backgrounds, including women and young people. We hear quite often about the need to involve them and inspire them. What could be more inspiring than electing me as a vice president today? But I'm not asking to be elected because of my age, but based on merit and based on consistently delivering results for our community. So please give me a vote, and together we can do great things for our community. Thank you. Thank you, Tal. We'll have 32 seconds added on for time for questions. Uh, I can see Ido ben Shoal and Haim uh, and any other questions? So have you asked? Yes, all right. And Richard Cohen, do you want to come to the microphone, please? Thank you. Do come and answer your, ask your question. Thank you. Ido. Hi. Ido Ben Shaul, West London Synagogue. Uh, you mentioned uh, your experience, your professional experience. Uh, now, in the case of uh, lawyers and in the case of spokespeople, I can see how does that contribute to the work of a vice president, but how does e-business relate to the board and to your proposed activities uh, on the board as a, as a vice president? Thank you. Thank you for the question, Ido. So, in my professional work, I am a country manager for uh, a technology company that helps retailers um, deal with cross-border challenges in e-commerce. And what it means is that we have to go and to listen to the concerns, the pains that they have in the businesses and try to tailor a solution how to make them work, how to grow revenue. This can really apply in how we are operating as a board. We need to listen to the concerns of different constituents across the country because the concerns of the ones in London may not be the same as the ones in Glasgow or in Sheffield. So we need to work in a very consultative way to listen a lot. And in, I can tell you in my approach in business, and I will bring it as well to the top table, 
I believe in a 70-30 approach, which means 70% of the time listening, 30% of the time talking. Because by listening, you are in much more control and you can have much more information and know how to, uh, how to handle the, uh, the issues that you are dealing with. I'm also very experienced in building partnerships in my work, so I have to deal with lots of other technology companies to look for different areas of growth, which will be very, very relevant for the work of the board. As I mentioned, if you want to tackle the issues of anti-Semitism and Shechita and Brit Mila, we need to work on how we're building alliances inside and outside inside our community. So I'm really, really experienced in doing that. So I hope that this has answered your question. It's nice to see a fellow Israeli standing for the uh, VP. Uh, my question, Tal, is which division would you prefer, prefer to um, stand on and why? Thank you for the question, Chaim. So, first of all, it's the job of the elected president to allocate the portfolios. So it will be whoever is elected today will have to allocate it. Uh, based on my experience at the board and my, uh, my previous experience, probably I would say that I would be happy to stay at the defense and interfaith relations um, should I am elected. But of course, whatever role that the president decides to task me with, I'm going to do the best job that I can. I'm going to give 120%. Richard Cohen Loughton, that board over there says the voice of British Jews, but there's one forum where the voice of British Jews of the Board of Deputies is not heard, and that's BBC's Question Time. I've often sat through Question Time in despair. Uh, Melanie Phillips and Jonathan Friedland are very cerebral, very bookish, but they never seem to ignite the audience. You, who've served in the IDF, you know what it's like on the ground to have to deal with, the, with our enemies. Are you prepared to be that person who, who's happy to go on question time and tell the audience that when they stop slandering our community, when they stop telling lies about us, we'll stop telling the truth about them? Thank you for the question, Richard. The, the, the answer to your question is absolutely yes. It's not just a question time. I'm happy to go and be wherever I'm needed in the country to make the case for British Jewry, to defend our way of life, to defend the state of Israel, and to stand up for what this board represents. So the answer is absolutely yes. Well done. Shalom, Hanan Charles, East London and Essex Liberal Synagogue. Tal, hi. Uh, I just wonder with all the problem in the anti-Semitism in the Labour Party, what can you bring to the table? How can you help us? Thank you for the question, Hanan. So I would start first of all by paying tribute to the honorary officers because they did a really, really good job um, in the last few months on dealing with this. And I was actually at Parliament Square with another 2,000 people on the 26th of March. And after the demo finished, I was actually inside Parliament delivering in hand the board's letter to 200 Labour MPs who attended the PLP party. And I think it shows us a great example how the board can really unite the community with a really simple message, enough is enough. I've been proactive in terms of fighting anti-Semitism in the Labour Party, as I said, already from 2014. I managed to get a public apology from a Labour MP called Yasmin Qureshi after she compared Gaza in the Holocaust in a parliamentary debate in February 2014. It gone under the radar, but following my contacts inside the Labour Party, they had to make it to make a public apology. Um, in addition, I would mention um, there have been other examples with Vicky Kirby, um, the anti-Semitic member who got suspended um, two years ago. Again, I contacted directly Ian McNichol, the party general secretary then, and the same day she got suspended from the party because of anti-Semitic uh, statements. The issue of anti-Semitism, you know, in the Labour Party started under Ed Miliband but got exacerbated under Jeremy Corbyn. And the way to deal with this is to keep uh, the pressure on the leader's office. Uh, and we have to look at what happens with the high-profile cases of Jackie Walker and Ken Livingstone. We obviously welcome what happened with Mark Watford, but we need to see those high-profile cases, what, what comes. I think, you know, in, 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 in order to deal with this, you know, it's not going to happen in one day that we're going to finish the anti-Semitism in the Labour Party. And that's why we also need to look at, you know, not just disciplinary action which they need to take, but also education. And in that regard, I want to commend the work of the Jewish Labour Movement which been doing on, first of all, pushing the amendment on anti-Semitism at the party conference last year, um, and also in the running training sessions for Labour Party members to make sure you know that they are not really by, by accident making any anti-Semitic statement. 
So as I said, we need to keep the pressure on the leader's office. We need to work with groups like the Jewish Labour Movement and Progress, who are very supporting the Jewish community. And, you know, to use contacts which we have. I have really good contacts in the Labour Party uh, with lots of MPs. And, you know, we, uh, we're going to make sure they know that they're listening to us and we're going to see action from Labour on anti-Semitism as soon as we can. Thank you very much. Uh, Bruce Greenberg. Hello, Tal. Uh, you're originally from Israel. Obviously, I'm originally from America. So what is your opinion of the United States moving its embassy from Tel Aviv to Yerushalayim, Jerusalem? in 15 seconds. Yeah, thank you for the question, Bruce. Obviously, it's, uh, it's a decision that the current president took, and it's up to the president of the United States to decide where he wants to uh, place the American embassy. And uh, that's what I would say about this. I think I will agree with one of the previous speakers. You know that uh, we need to consult before making any kind of statement on this uh, move of the embassy. Thank you, Tal. Thank you very much to Tal Ofer. The next uh, candidate is Gary Mond, uh, Deputy for Jewish National Fund. Gary is just coming up to the rostrum now. Gary, you're going to have four minutes to make your presentation. And Gary, you'll see the time that you've got left on the screen to your right. Uh, I would stop you if you go over. If you go under, any of that time will be added on. And the time for questions won't count, but the time for your answers will, and you'll have an additional uh, up to four minutes. Gary, when you're ready. Thank you. A few words about me to begin, ladies and gentlemen. I'm an economics graduate from Cambridge University and a qualified chartered accountant. I started my own business 26 years ago, which involves the presentation of training courses in banking and corporate finance to bankers, lawyers, and corporate executives. I've considerable experience politically. I've stood for parliament twice, served as a borough councillor for six years, and have been a board member of Conservative Friends of Israel since 2007. On the board of deputies, I represent the Jewish National Fund, which is one of the major Jewish charities and which raises many millions of pounds every year for projects which develop the Negev in Israel. I've also served on the Defense and Interfaith Division for the past three years and have additionally assisted the board as the returning officer in the October by-elections and have also served as a scrutineer on three previous elections. For me, the most important issues are the ongoing battles against anti-Semitism and the attempts to delegitimize the State of Israel. And in recent times, these two issues have morphed into one. When we hear our enemies say that Israel is an apartheid state, that is not only untrue, it's also anti-Semitic. <laughs> the board needs to continue to fight this toxic virus in every way that it can, in the media, by lobbying government, by referring matters to the police, and even, as we saw with the recent Dayenu event in Parliament Square in March, by demonstrating publicly. And this problem is one which we cannot solve alone. We have to work with other organisations, big and small, Jewish and non-Jewish, Friends of Israel groups and others to help win the argument. The board also has to retain and improve on its relevance to the Jewish community. Now, most Jews in the UK believe that Jonathan Arkush has been an outstanding president, and he has. But why? But why? Yes, he's a great public speaker, and yes, he comes across well in the media. Yet the key reason for Jonathan's success is different. It is that what he has been saying for many years on the celebration of Jewish life, on fighting anti-Semitism, on fighting attempts to delegitimize Israel, 
has almost always chimed exactly with what so many Jews in this country are thinking and saying. That's why Jonathan has been such a success. So we achieve relevance by accurately representing the views of the Jewish community. Yet more needs to be done. We want the board to be the place where matters of importance are discussed and agreed, and that means regular debates on the topical issues. And additionally, many of us will remember the presentation made to the board's meeting last July by Dr. Jonathan Boyd of Jewish Policy Research, which illustrated that the Jewish community might be growing, but synagogue membership has declined by 25% over the last 25 years. And that means that for the board to be truly relevant, we have to find ways of bringing in deputies who do not necessarily represent um, major synagogues or community organizations. In conclusion, the experience, I believe that I have the experience and the wisdom to be a vice president. I believe I have the time to be a vice president. And above all, I have the determination and capability of making a success of being a vice president. I wish everybody a happy Yom Yerushalayim. Thank you. Twelve seconds will be added on to time for answering the questions. Questions to Gary Mond, please. I see Richard Cooper at the back. And yes, thank you. Um, and uh, Peter Baum. Uh, is that... Amos. All right, let's start with... Who says the hand there? I can see. I can just see the hand. Ah, oh, yes. Thank you, Mervyn. Thank you. Do come forward. Okay. Um, hi, Gary. Um, could you tell me, please, what are your views on the board's interfaith work? I'm a strong supporter of interfaith work in principle. Um, back in the 1980s, I was a member of Westminster Synagogue and I used to listen to the late uh, Rabbi Albert Friedlander of Blessed Memory, who was one of the, champi one of the early champions of interfaith work in that era. Um, I think that what matters is that the projects that we work on and the partners we work with have to be the right ones. If they are, then a lot of benefit can accrue to the Jewish community in the form of, often in the form of education actually, which is most helpful. However, and there is a however, and that is that occasionally some of our enemies who are anti-Semitic or anti-Zionist or whatever seek to use interfaith as like a Trojan horse and we have to be very, very careful about who we work with in that regard. I'm thinking particularly, I'm thinking particularly of the Oxfam debate. Uh, way back in 2013, those of you who were on the board might remember I was one of the two people who proposed that the board abort its um, project with Oxfam because I did not see them as being the type of partner that we ought to have. But in principle, yes, I, uh, I do support interfaith work, and I certainly supported Marie van der Zyl's decision to change the name of the Defence Division from just Defence to Defence and Interfaith. Good afternoon, Gary. David Simmons, Northland Pinner Liberal Synagogue. Having, you having been a parliamentary candidate twice, I think it's fair to assume that you have strong political views, whatever they might be. <laughs> How would you keep separate those strong political views from the vision and values of the board? I begin by answering I was a parliamentary candidate a long, long time ago in 1987 and 1992. The board has to represent people of all political views, whatever they, they may be. I think what's particularly important is that the board uh, adopts um, policies that are those that unite the Jewish community, where the overwhelming majority of what we say is supported by the overwhelming majority of Jews. This is why I'm strongly supported much of what Jonathan Arkush has done, particularly on fighting anti-Semitism, celebrating Jewish life, Brit Milash, Shahita, etc. Because these are policies that doesn't matter whether you're a socialist or a free market conservative or what, these are policies that most of us support. 
Where we get into trouble is if we start talking and start saying that the board supports a particular policy, where virtually half the Jewish community are opposed to it. Organ donation, for example, could be an example. There are certain areas regarding Israel, also are further examples. If we keep focused on the areas that unite us, we will do well, and it doesn't matter whether we're conservatives, socialists, liberal democrats, or whatever. Peter Boom, South End and Westcliff Hebrew Congregation. Gary, what would you do to help the board uh, defend the State of Israel um, against those groups who continuously seek to delegitimise Israel? I think it's very important that we continue to support Israel in every which way we can. I'm here referring to the state of Israel, I'm not referring to any particular grouping within Israel. We have to support Israel's existence and more than that, we have to stand up against those who would seek to delegitimize it. But to answer, Peter, your question quite specifically, I do foresee it being advantageous to the Jewish community if the board can work together with other pro-Israel groups wherever possible. I'm thinking of some of the Friends of Israel groups, even working with Labour Friends of Israel or Conservative Friends of Israel for that matter. We need to join forces with our friends to help in the campaign to educate um, young people in this country about Israel, both Jewish and non-Jewish, uh, and essentially working together is going to be the way forward. Um, as regards the groups that delegitimize Israel, we need to fight them in every which way that we can, as I illustrated in my speech. Uh, Amos Shonfield, Deputy for Yachad. Um, I'm interested in the work you talked about your constituency, JNF, uh, and in helping the, the Negev flourish. Yep. Um, a recent action of Kakal in the, in the Negev, in helping the Negev flourish, was the expulsion and demolition of Umal Khiran, uh, a Negev Bedouin community, in order to build the Jewish community of Khiran. 170 families are now homeless. Now, in thinking about the diversity of opinion in the board, you talked about staying away from these issues. How will you, as an HO, um, hold the diversity of not only two opinions, because you and I will disagree vehemently on this, <laughs> um, on an opinion that is so close to your, to your heart in terms of the constituency and the work that your constituency is doing? Firstly, the actual demolition decision is not something the JNF made. It's uh, something that's a matter for the Israeli government. Can I also say that the JNF has also supported a number of projects with the Bedouin community. I personally, I personally signed off on the behalf of the JNF on a project for some 300 computers to be made available to uh, the Bedouin community in the Negev. So, uh, you know, th there is no uh, dif discrimination on my part. But coming back, try and answer your question directly. The Board of Deputies has to represent everyone, and on issues where there are divisions, such perhaps in certain aspects of policy regarding Israel, we need to be silent. Simple as that. Thank we you. We need to be silent. Gary. Thank you. <laughs> sorry, Mervyn. I'm sorry, Mervyn. There's no time. Yeah, there's no time. No, you, you, I will choose you for another candidate should you want to ask a question. Uh, Gary Mon, thank you very much. The next candidate will be Rosalind Pine, Deputy for Finchley United Synagogue. Okay. Rosalind, you've got four minutes for your presentation. The time can be seen on the screen to your right, and I won't interrupt you uh, unless or until you reach uh, zero. There'll be four minutes for questions. And the time for, answering the, for asking the questions won't count, but the time for answering the questions will, will count. If you have any time left over from your presentation, that'll be added on for your time to answer questions. When you're ready, Rosalind. Okay, I think I'm ready now. Um, in the year 2000, the Second Intifada was unleashed upon uh, Israel, and with it a host of anti-Israel events up and down the UK. I was living in Manchester then, 
and I think it was a combination of bloody-mindedness and masochism. I started going to these events up and down the country in London. And you'd get there, there'd usually only be the same three or four of us. We got to know each other very well, but never anybody from any representative Jewish organization. The atmosphere was absolutely toxic. It wasn't about this or that Israeli policy they didn't like. This was raw anti-Semitism masquerading as um, anti-Zionism and a faux concern for human rights. I realized that the only way to defeat this is to know much more than they did. And so I embarked on a steep learning curve uh, about the whole background to the, com to the conflict, the law, the history, what have you. And this curve has continued to this day. And just to say that eventually I learned how to silence the likes of Gerald Kaufman, Ilan Pape, Gada Kami, and even twice from the audience of Question Time, BBC's Question Time, Jenny Tong, which was quite daunting, I can tell you. At the same time, I was always also sending off letters to the press. Uh, I was always writing, writing in response to nasty articles, and I actually managed to clock up since that time over 20 letters to the Times alone, especially, as well as many other um, publications. So I've honed my letter writing skills, I have debating skills, I think, and a knowledge which I think will stand me in good stead here. I also decided that to act alone, you can only go so far. And in 2013, I decided quite belatedly to join the board so that I could continue in a more effective forum to do what I've always done. Turning to the challenges that face Anglo Jewry, I'm not going to bore you and repeat them because we know what they are. But in order for the board to face these, we have to make it more relevant. We have to make the board relevant to what we're doing. And to do that, we need to have the young. The young are the, the key. We need to draw in young blood. And how are we going to do that? The only way to do that is to send them out into synagogues of all denominations, to campuses, um, to even sixth forms, to explain what it is we do. Because there is a widespread perception that the board is irrelevant, it doesn't speak for us, it's just a talking shop. And the youth can do that. They can dispel this, this myth. But once here, we need to retain them. We need to retain the young people, and the way to do it is to give them something meaningful to do. In fact, that applies to all of us. Give us all something meaningful to do, because many of us feel quite useless, even sitting on a division. We just do not have enough uh, outlet for our diverse skills and talents. There's so many things we could do. We could start a, a, a a rapid response letter writing initiative, many, many other ideas. But let's begin by improving the plenaries. Let's, for goodness sake, revert to the parliamentary style of seating, which was voted for overwhelmingly. And I would say, I would say as well, keep the first two or three rows for the people who prefer to sit forwards and for the rest of us to face each other so we can actually communicate one way or the other with each other. Then I would also cut out the divisional reports and the questions, because we read all these before. It can all be printed before so that we can see them. And the time freed up we can use for debates, having interesting speakers, having longer workshops. There's also another thing which I thought was very nice when it happened, and I'd like to see this a permanent feature. We sometimes have a store where we bring items for the homeless. I think that's a lovely thing to do. It shows that we're outward looking, and it's not just virtue signaling, it's actually doing good. And I would like to see that as a permanent feature, either for the homeless, for other local charities. Thank you, Rose. That will conclude your address. Oh, Time's, up. Time's up, four minutes. There's going to be questions, if anyone would like to ask. I can see Sh uh, Sheila Levitt. And behind Sheila Mervyn, I think I will, of course, because you missed out last time. Yes, um, do come forward. Yes. Edward, sorry. Yes. Right, that'll be three. And were there some hands at um, Rob? Rob Sassoon and the lady behind Ros Rob Sassoon, behind Nathan. Do, yeah, thank you. Sheila. Sheila Levitt. E-H-R-S. We have a relationship with the Council of Christians and Jews, but what will you do to have a good dialogue with the Muslim community? Well, I'm very much for having interfaith with the Muslim community, but I have one caveat. Any organization we have interfaith with, we should have one understanding that the nation state of the Jewish people, Israel, is not up for negotiation. 
And whoever doesn't agree with that is not respecting my right as a human being to have whatever every other nation on the planet has. And so that I would make as a caveat, as an understanding. It's just not one of those things that we may disagree on. It's essential to whom we are. Edward Cohen, Ealing United Synagogue. <clears throat> Rosalind, in your presentation, you mentioned that you're thinking or would like perhaps to change the system of the divisional boards that we have at present. But given the system that we have, if you were elected vice president, which of the boards would you like to be put in charge of and why? Ah, no, let me just make it clear. We get the divisional reports printed out so we can read them before we come. Uh, there's only one division, the one I've sat on and the one I would have be competent, is the international division. That would be my speciality and that's what I would like to do. Thank you. Mervyn. Mervyn Smith, Sutton. I was actually going to ask the question to Gary Mond, uh, but I think you have equal knowledge and response possibilities. Um, everybody has talked quite correctly with regard to anti-Semitism. I'd be in, I happen to feel that the board has not been strong enough in acting against the anti-Semitism developing in this country. And look on the hierarchy within the Labour Party as starting with John Landsman and Momentum, and below that, the organ grinder, John McDonnell, and the monkey, Jeremy Corbyn. Do you believe that the board should be acting in a stronger capacity and if you were elected would you be pursuing that or considering that enough is enough with regard to the moves that the board has presently made? Well I think that actually recently I think the board has been admirable, I think it has been strong and strength is power. They have to understand, it's rather like when you bring up children, most of the time you say no, but you don't really mean it. And they listen when you actually do mean it. And I think that the, the latest um, initiative of the board and the JLC, they actually meant it. We had our red lines, and I think that's the way to go. And I think that we shouldn't go running after them. We should put our position clear. We're here to listen and to speak to you. Uh, and that's the, the way we should go. Yes. Rob. Thank you. Rob Sassoon, Deputy for Limud. Um, you talked in your speech about uh, involving more young people in the work of the board, which is, as I'm sure we'll all agree, a very laudable uh, aim. Um, I just want to sort of pick you up on uh, some of the wording you use. You said you want to give the young people something to do. And that well, all language, something to do. <laughs> the language to me sounded a little bit sort of tokenistic, I think, that you're no, saying. No. Well, they're here, so let's just we'll give them a little project to do, and, and they can sit in the corner and do it. And I just wanted to give you the, the chance to perhaps clarify um, your your intentions and, and you know how how you would engage with um, younger deputies who are here and and sort of young people in the community in general. Well, maybe my wording is a bit unfortunate. It's quite hard speaking, you know, in a formulaic way. Um, I actually feel the same about all of us. We come here, I don't feel that my talents are really called upon or being used, even in my division, I have to say. So I think we need to delegate things that could be done, which may be done by the paid staff, I don't know, uh, as I say, rapid response letter writing team, social media. I mean, there's so much out there that if we actually coordinated it and say, well, you know, we'll look at the spectrum of newspapers, S somebody can deal with The Guardian, somebody with The Times, for example, I'm just saying the print media. And there's so many initiatives which can actually give all of us, not just the young, but I mean, I know now there are three young deputies in their 30s. They're leaving the board now because they're frustrated, they haven't been called upon, and they say to me, well, we can use our talents better elsewhere there's other organizations out there where we can be more effective so we can there are many things that we could do here and give all of us not just the young a meaningful role that we feel that we, that we have a purpose thank you <laughs> do ask a question name the constituency oh. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Ruth Hart, future deputy for Bournemouth Reform. Um, um, 
and Kohaka Ford um, to Roslyn for ed educating yourself. It, it's something that I and many people my age, we've been attempting to do for 40 years. Would you agree with me that we need to begin our education further upstream? Would you agree with me that perhaps our political and Zionist education is as lamentably superficial and shallow as our religious education? We learn um, to speak in slogans, in generalities. It is, you know, oh, I mean, I haven't been through university and you're having been a retired shore warden and general busybody for many years, I, I've yet to convince um, one anti Yes. Statement. Can yes. you put your question, please? Well, would, would you agree that perhaps uh, our education in the media should begin much earlier? <laughs> Um, and what are we going to do about it? Yeah, well, anybody can, who wants to learn can just open a book and educate themselves. But coming back, it's very important because there's so much superficiality in every walk of life. And one of the things actually about educating, and coming back to the previous question, I would like to see young deputies, or together with some doubt myself, having the facts, just the facts, and with their permission, I wouldn't want to go past the, the, the Union of Jewish Students, going to campuses and helping them with the facts so that they know how to deal with these. Because it's, they, they've got studies and they so, have so many other things to do. And I think we could help in that from the board. Thank, Thank you very much. Any other questions for Roslyn? Uh, Robert Sachs, I see, and I'd like to see if Deputy hasn't asked a question before, if at all possible. Uh, wait a minute. Yes, please come. Please come forward. Robert Sachs, Belsize Square Synagogue. Roslyn, you've made an issue again of the seating in the plenary division. I'm one of those who suffers from hearing loss, and I value this. One of the advantages, you say, of using the parliamentary system is that deputies can communicate with each other. If they're busy communicating with each other during meetings, could you explain to me how they can pay attention to what is taking place during the meetings? First of all, Robert, I don't know whether you heard me, and I, I was very specific to say we should keep the first two or three rows for anybody, for whatever reason, they want to sit facing forward. But I can tell you, when, I, when we sit this way, Whoever I, people tell me, they just hate it because you can't, you don't know who's been there. It's like in a theater, you see people's backs of heads. At least when we're facing each other, we can communicate. You know, there's a, a person on the other side. We can make faces, we can say hello. We know who's been there. Like this, it's just the kind of, you know, you, you, you go home, you don't even know who's been there. Sometimes, they, were you there last time? Yes, I was at the plenary. It's a, just like in parliament, you can see people communicating across the, the thing. And we, we had no trouble before. Uh, in turning to listen to what was going on. I think we managed to multitask the two uh, activities quite well. Thank you. Um, well, there are three seconds technically. I'm not sure if it's feasible <laughs> for Ros really. If, okay. it, if it maybe it's has okay. to be a yes no question. I'll speed up. Maybe it'll have to be a yes no question. If you can't do it like that, maybe. Okay. I'll do it next time. Richard, is it a yes no question? Yes. All right. Uh, do, you give, do you have any ideas who you'd like to see as a speaker at this year's annual dinner, given yes. that you don't, like, you don't like candid friends who tell us that uh, Israel's wonderful, but uh, the settlements were an obstacle to peace? Yeah. In fact, I was going to come to that. I have actually made a foray. I've asked That's Rod Little. That's it, Ros. I'm afraid we won't know. <laughs> we and will he have said to... yes. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we will have to possess ourselves he said in yes. patience there to know are. that one. Thank you, Rosalind Pine. Deputies, the last candidate for vice president, who we're going to hear from, is Robert Festenstein, the deputy for Presswich Hebrew Congregation. Robert will have four minutes to give his presentation. Robert, the screen on your right, you will see how much time you have left. Okay. Uh, I won't interrupt you unless you get to zero, and I will uh, require you to conclude. 
there will be questions for four minutes. The time for asking the questions won't count. The time for answering the questions will. If there's any time left over from your presentation, it'll be added on to your time for answering the questions. Robert, when you're ready. Thank you very much. Deputies, good afternoon. We were slaves to the Pharaoh in the land of Egypt. At Pesach, we speak as if we were brought forth from slavery and celebrate that we are free. After our emancipation in the 19th century, the return to our homeland in the 20th, now in the 21st century as a community, we are facing an attempt from our enemies to diminish us, to return us to second-class citizen status. Naturally, at such a time, it is the leaders of the Jewish community in general, and the board in particular, that people look to for leadership. This is my bid to be part of that team. A vice president needs to fulfill three requirements, to be representative, collaborative, and to lead. Representing people is what I do. My day job as a solicitor sees me acting for clients, and as vice chair of the Zionist Central Council in Manchester, I promote and defend the democratic state of Israel. I'm uniquely placed to understand the needs of and represent communities of all different sizes and locations. I grew up in a small community in Harpenden, in Hertfordshire, started my working life in North London and moved to Manchester some 200 miles away. I understand the reality that for regional deputies attending a plenary sometimes means a whole day out and the commitment that that requires. Collaboration is the best way forward. We are, a sm we are small in number and on many issues it is vital to speak with a single voice. We need to avoid duplication of effort. We cannot agree on everything, but it is essential we agree on as much common ground as possible. In December of last year, I met with Sivanya Ari in Tel Aviv. She is the Israeli entrepreneur and CEO of Innovation Africa. This is an organization that has brought clean drinking water to over a million people across Africa. I was instrumental in bringing her to the UK to speak to the House of Commons and to a joint Zionist Central Council Board of Deputies event in Kentish Town in, Mar Town, Town, Town in March of this year. <clears throat> the benefit of this collaboration saw her exposed to a much wider audience. Leadership is about innovation and a direction to achieve a common goal. There is a significant concern at the increase in criminal offences directed against Jews. I've spoken with the campaign against anti-Semitism and they've indicated that they would be pleased to work with us in sharing their resource with their guide to hate crime. The board should be informing deputies how to deal with the increase in these offences, particularly on social media so that they in turn can inform their own organisations and shawls as to what action should be taken. Much has been said about encouraging more women and younger people to become deputies. I know that in Manchester some of the shawls, because of their membership, could send more deputies, but don't. I'm sure that this is repeated around the country. It must be a relatively easy task to identify which organisations are underrepresented and then once identified should be supported in encouraging women and younger people to stand as deputies. I believe that in this simple way, within a few months, we can start to change the demographic of the board. Finally, we need a strategy of dealing with the political parties. We are not being taken seriously. Theodore Roosevelt said, speak softly and carry a big stick. He was, I'm sure, building the approach adopted by Moses with Pharaoh. When Moses' talking didn't work, he got to work with his stick, and with some help on high, he got a result. <clears throat> we, need to, we need to make it clear that our, our enemies will be made to understand it is no longer open season on us. <clears throat> Spencer Nathan, C, and... Yes, yes, thank you. Uh, yes, thank you very much. Let's start with those with three, please. Spencer. Spencer Nathan, Bournemouth Hebrew Congregation till midnight, and thereafter Edgeway United Synagogue. 
Um, I, put, I'm a, I put this to you as a question as a regional deputy. What do you see as the unique role of the Board of Deputies in the regions? The JLC are already represented and funded in the major cities, the staff working mainly in an advocacy role. Where should we work together and where do, you, where do we contribute to Jewish life in the region separately? The regions are really important. When I, was, when I was a child, there were many, many towns and cities around the country which had Jewish communities, and many people in the wider community knew somebody who was Jewish. What's happened now is that there's been a centralization of Jews in London, Manchester, Glasgow, one or two other centers. So in answer to your question, <clears throat> how should we work with the JLC? I think what we should be doing is providing resource to the deputies and also learning from them what it is that they require. Until we actually have a proper dialogue with the local and with the regional deputies, we can't know what it is that they need. Gary Abrams, Childwall Hebrew Congregation, Liverpool. Um, Robert, we've heard a lot today about, about anti-Semitism, um, yes. but my question is a little um, obtuse perhaps. What strategy, if any, would you employ to convince those that are supporting Jeremy Corbyn and his acolytes, such as union leaders, um, to change their view on their attitudes to Israel and therefore on anti-Semitism? I think, like I said when I spoke, I talked about a, a stick. I think talking to people might not be enough. I think what we need to do is identify in those organizations, there's plenty of them, trades unions, some charities, academia, and say, why are you treating the Jews differently to the way in which you might treat people from a black community, or why you might treat women? And so one of the things I'll be doing is looking at see where it is that they're crossing the line, where they're breaching legislation, where they're breaching regulatory guidelines, particularly with charities, and start hitting back in that direction. I think talking to people is fine, <clears throat> but the problem is, the problem is that just talk isn't going to do it. We need to do something. So if you threaten them, I don't mean physically, but if you threaten them with having their funding taken away or threaten them in relation to the Equality Act, I think that's going to make them take us more seriously. Okay. Ella Marks, League of Jewish Women. If we have any future discussion on reorganization of board and um, representation. What is your opinion of having a fixed term cap on the number of um, f terms a deputy can be serving without, without standing yes, I down yes, for, for I, a term? Yes, I understand. I mean, it's difficult because <clears throat> You have, you have people here, without being indelicate, who are perhaps over retirement age. And one of the, <laughs> and one of the, one of the problems you have is you need to use that experience. So it seems to me it's not a question of fixed term. It's about who holds that office should be made, not made, but should be understood to actually do something. It's not enough just to turn up, go and get your bagels on a Sunday morning, come here and listen to what everybody else says and go home for a, for a late lunch. You actually have to take part. It's not about how old you are or how long you've been here. It's about the effort that you put in. Uh, Lawrence Cross. Um, one moment. Uh, Paul Moran. Sorry. Right. Yeah, and Kerry Labeth. Robert. Hi. There has been some disquiet among some deputies that you appeared in a video film with Tommy Robinson, leader of the English Defence League, and are supposed to be associated with some extremist groups up in the Manchester area. Would you care to comment on those allegations? Well. I have nothing to do with Tommy Robinson. He's not my client. My client was a chap called John Fletcher. He runs a off-license in Sunderland. He put up a poster outside his, uh, outside his premises saying, fight terrorism by British. And the police rang him up at 8 o'clock one night and said unless he took it down within 30 minutes, they'd take his, his license away. He approached a friend of mine who's a uh, lawyer in Manchester who came to me because I uh, have experience with judicial review. 
and I was brought in to assist Mr. Fletcher, and he asked me to go on a video to uh, assist to bring pressure upon the local authority, which I did successfully. Paul Moran, Paul Moran Glasgow Jewish Representative Council. Uh, a question about Jewish communities in the regions. What strategies and what action do you think that as Vice President you could take to enhance the ability of Jewish communities in the regions to combat anti-Israel propaganda and to promote the Israeli case? Okay. Well, as I said before, I've had a conversation with the campaign against anti-Semitism. They have a guide on hate crime. I think we should be using that resource. I talked about collaboration before. And I also think, also think there should be a more of a two-way two street. So I talked also in my, I think one of my emails, I talked about having a deputies area uh, on the website, on the Board of Deputies website. <clears throat> and I strongly believe in having, um, when, when the board goes up to different areas, it would be very useful if they could communicate with the deputies when they're going, so there's a, an opportunity always to meet with the officers or the staff when they go to, say, Hull or Newcastle or Liverpool. And it's about developing, like I say, a two-way street. And if there's a possibility of developing some sort of fund as well, then that would be, that would be a good thing in my view. Um, just a follow-up question on the video. Um, how can deputies trust your judgment after you've agreed to appear in a publicity video with an anti-Semitic white nationalist? <clears throat> I was doing my job. I'm regulated by the Solicitor's Regulation Authority. I undertook a job in my best interest of my client. And if you want to say, how can you trust me, the answer is because I did that, because it's in the best interest of my client. If you, want, if you want to see somebody with integrity who's inter determined to do the best for either his client or the entity which he represents, then I'm your man. Thank you. Thank you to Robert Festenstein. Uh, deputies, I am informed that we have a result of the ballot for the election of the next President of the Board of Deputies. Deputies, 245 ballots were issued and 238 votes cast. At the third stage of counting, the winner of the election of the next President of the Board of Deputies is Marie van der Zyl. I shall now invite Marie to say a few brief words. Marie, if you would, from the rostrum. Thank you. I'm really overwhelmed. I want to thank every single one of you for voting for me and placing all your trust and confidence in me. Can I, can I please thank Jonathan, Jonathan Arkush, Richard, Tony Leifer, the returning officer, Rachel, you've done an amazing job. All of the board staff, Bernice, Greg, Joel, Gillian, you've all been an amazing, an amazing team. Can I please thank my constituency, the Jewish Lads and Girls Brigade. Neil Martin at the back has been a pillar of support and Lord Levy has believed in me from start to finish. I really couldn't have done this without my constituency. My campaign team. Can I thank you all? You've been incredible, led by Adrian and Gary. Thank you so much. I want to say for my mum, I hope you don't mind, I know she'll be watching and be so proud. And unfortunately, my father's passed away, but I know that this would have been his proudest day. And for my family, thank you so much for being so tolerant with me at this time. It will be an honour and a privilege for me to serve you and the community and I will put all of my heart and soul into my board role. 
I really look forward to working with Gillian and the rest of the board team going forward and all of you. And I'd really like to thank you once again from the very bottom of my heart. Thank you. Deputies, I now must ask you to cast your votes for the candidates for vice president. Deputies, we need to encourage younger members of the community to come forward. So I'm playing my direct part in that. Uh, deputies, the first task I would like you to do is to approve the minutes of the last meeting in Gibraltar. Well, I've heard no amendments to that. So the minutes of the meeting in Gibraltar are approved. I now move to the President's statement. Uh, you've seen the announcements of the Muzzletovs. I would like to add a Muzzletov to Eleanor Lind, the Deputy for New London Synagogue, on reaching a special birthday and also uh, her 55th wedding anniversary. Muzzletov to Eleanor. There's also a muzzle to Richard Benson, the deputy for CST, on the birth of his first grandchild, Taylor. Um, deputies, muzzle also to uh, Netta Barzilai on winning the Eurovision Song Contest. <laughs> deputies, I, I don't know if there's going to be many questions, but you can see the subject matter. The first is meeting with Jeremy Corbyn, and in that context, can I welcome Louise Elman, Member of Parliament for Liverpool Riverside. Louise, we have been so moved and strengthened by all the dignity that you have shown, most recently in that memorable debate in the House of Commons on anti-Semitism. <laughs> Deputies, I've tried to encapsulate uh, all my feelings on that meeting with Jeremy Corbyn. I'll take any further questions if any arise. Uh, Louise Elman. Good man. Doing brilliantly. Well done. I don't know who it is. It's possible it's not from. Yes. Thank you. Um, Louise Elman, Jewish Labour Movement. Um, I'd like to congratulate um, the board for the action that was taken, first in holding that rally, Dayenu, and also in the follow-up actions that have been taken, including the, the meeting with Jeremy Corbyn. The anger about the issue of the ignoring of anti-Semitism in the Labour Party has been ignored for far too long. There have been many of us in the party, many MPs, um, non-Jewish as well as Jewish, who have been campaigning on this. But that rally did something special. And it was only when that rally took place and the actions that took place after it that the leadership of the Labour Party decided they needed to act on anti-Semitism. Now, I don't think anybody should make any assumptions about what might be in people's minds and whether people have changed their minds, but they have decided they need to act. So I would say congratulations to what the board did, and it is essential that all of that is followed up in a careful, purposeful way so that we concentrate on the issue, do not get diverted into other issues, keep to the issue, maintain the pressure, and there is terrific support from the Parliamentary Labour Party and others within the Labour movement. So thank you for what was done, and will you continue in this way? <laughs> to the new president. Flo Kaufman. Jerry, if you ask a question on this, there won't be any further questions, so choose your one. Flo. Flo, Flo Kaufman, Hampstead Garden Suburb. Well, um, Mr. Outgo for outgoing President, um, I'd just like to say to you and to Jonathan Goldstein uh, from the Jewish Leadership Council that what we saw when you had your meeting with uh, Jeremy Corbyn was exactly how the community should be operating. 
we, we, we saw the example of, of leadership, preparation, your conduct after the meeting was, uh, gave everybody, I think, a, a real Philip in the community. And I really genuinely feel that um, the meeting actually affected the local results. And I think that, w that uh, Barnet, uh, the result that was achieved in Barnet, against all the odds, was uh, largely to do with the meeting that you had with Jeremy Corbyn. And I'd also like to say that, you know, meetings like that don't just happen overnight. There was a huge amount of preparation involved by, by those who attended the meeting, by uh, Gillian and um, by uh, everybody else who was involved in part of it. And it showed. And I say to you, Marie, that you're the next president of the board, the new president of the board. You have got an example in front of you to continue, and I know that you will continue working with the JLC and with other communal organisations. Okay. And I'd like to be the first to congratu congratulate you publicly on your wonderful achievement. Cherry, yeah. and then Malvin Benjamin. Jerry Lewis, first of all, I echo what Flo has just said, and we're lovely to see you back, and I wish you a full, speedy recovery. <laughs> Mr. President, I know you will have some comments to make a little later, but we should just say farewell to a number of very distinguished deputies who are retiring on this occasion. I'm not going to single out any individuals, but they know who they are. But, Mr. President, I think it's worthwhile you just pointing out that they have contributed richly to the board over many many years <clears throat> it is not usual for me to praise you you don't need to Jerry <laughs> this guy came to our shul yesterday in the rain he gave a superb presentation and colour vote to him for the work he did especially in this last few months. He really does deserve credit <coughs> for being able to deliver a very useful position for the community to be in, where we now have an ability to shape how the Labour Party may go in the future. May I just draw to your attention, sir, there is a whole issue of the definition and Simon Johnson revealed that the issue wasn't answered by Jeremy Corbyn himself in fact he was silent it was Seamus Milne who did all the arguing about the definition I see him every week in the lobby and in Parliament and I have tried to pin him down he's adamant that the Labour Party never accepted all the definitions and that is going to be a big bugbear People should understand, Corbyn himself is no way anti-Semitic, but the people around him definitely are. And one of the chief people amongst those, I'm not going to call him anti-Semitic, but he's right on the verges of, is Seamus Milne. He shapes what goes on in the Labour Party. What we need to be much aware of, and I hope people will understand why I'm saying this, there's always buses running up and down Whitehall. People sometimes go under them. And if anything happens to Corbyn in the near future, as things stand, McDonnell is the next in line from that wing of the party. He's a very different kettle of fish. He's very shrewd. I've known him a very long time. But the party, and Marie, this will be your pigeon, will have to start thinking on tactics on how to deal with possible future leaders, and McDonnell is one of them. Thank you, Jerry. I thank you for the work you've done, Mr. President, and I wish you a happy and successful retirement. Thank you. Malvin, question rather than statement, please. And if it's about me, I'll probably rule it out of Mr. order. Mr. President, you know, I will know in future not to wait for Jerry Lewis to end. Uh, um, I don't know how many of you went to shul yesterday, 
but in the Sedra, some of you may have missed it. And I'll repeat it again. And it came to pass that the children of Israel were under sustained attack from enemies. And the most vicious and um, harbored of enemies were the Corbinites. And the Corbinites labored to destroy the people of Israel. But you know, we were very fortunate, the children of Israel, because we had leadership. We had leadership from a man named Goldstein from the tribe of the JLC, and leadership from a man named Arkash, who came from the land of Boreham Wood and Elstree. And these leaders fought a doughty fight. But you know, the cloud became very dark, and the sky became darker. And all of a sudden, there was a beacon of light from the land of Barnet. And the land of Barnet revealed that they were not prepared to tolerate the excesses of the Corbinites. But you know, also, the children of Israel were dismayed because they found that one of their leaders was departing the battlefield and going back to the land of Elstree and Boreham Wood. And they were dismayed and they were upset. But ladies and gentlemen, they were also very pleased to have inherited his leadership. And they thanked Hashem and they thanked all of those who supported them for the leadership qualities that Arkash had shown over the years. <clears throat> so they wished him well, as we do today in this hall. Thank you very much Thank indeed you, for everything that you have done for us. I'm I'm, Richard Richard as well. uh, I'm just going to answer questions by pledging that I believe that the board will continue uh, together with our allies across the communal scene to hold the Labour Party to account in all its, all its politicians, not just the leader. Uh, and as we've said here, with clarity and resolve. And that will fall to, that task will fall to my successors and I have no doubt at all that they will be ready and up to the task. Uh, Iran nuclear agreement, anything we we'll want to add on that? Um, the concerns we have are obvious and uh, all of us share them. The regional weekend in Gibraltar was a wonderful success, uh, save for the weather. Douglas Ryan from Gibraltar is here. Douglas, please wave, huge. Douglas, again, please convey our warmest greetings to the community that received us with such friendship and warmth. It was an amazing regional occasion. Uh, it will long be remembered. Thank you. Uh, the re-election of Stuart. Um, Stuart, thank you. Thank you for being a really outstanding treasurer. Uh, and now to um, my farewell paragraph and my message, if you will indulge me just for a few moments, as you have uh, by admitting a particularly young deputy today. Actually, I've only brought him up here to be introduced to Richard's uh, daughter, Rachel. <laughs> <laughs> to impress her. Deputies, these, these will be my last words after occupying this platform for nine years as your vice president and subsequently president. 
uh, I have nothing but praise and appreciation for the vice presidents who I have served with over that period, uh, and particularly in the last three years, because we have been a very friendly, a very cohesive, and a very collegiate team. I particularly want to express enormous appreciation uh, to senior vice president Richard. <clears throat> Richard, you have been an amazing colleague. Uh, your judgment uh, and your skill on so many issues have been invaluable. Uh, we will miss you at this board. I will miss you, but uh, I may have uh, lost a colleague but gained a friend. I'd also like to thank, I'd like to thank all the candidates that we've had today. I don't know about you, I was really impressed. Every candidate, I believe, did not just live up to their game, but they went beyond their game in their presentations and their answers to questions to you. And I think that it's an enormous tribute to the health of the Board of Deputies that we had no less than four candidates for the post of President and nine for the post of Vice President. And believe me, the task of uh, the hustings and the manifestos and the answering questions and the uh, phone calls and everything else is very arduous. And I want to thank all of them for the commitment and the time and the tremendous skill that they've shown today. And it augurs extremely well for the future of the Board of Deputies. I also want to express thanks to those deputies who are standing down, um, including at least one former honor officer, Lawrence, after I think 44 years, Lawrence at the board. Um, all deputies give enormous time and commitment to the board. I thank all of you, whether you're continuing or whether you stood down, thank you all. Sadly, one who won't be standing down from the board is me, because thanks to the constitution, I'm told that I am a deputy for life without a constituency. <laughs> I would like to make an appeal. I'd like to make an appeal. Yeah, I'd like you to change it for me and you'll get no opposition from me to that one. Um, but I, I may not be quite as uh, regular a tender at the board, but I nevertheless look forward uh, to being here. And of course, I will follow with enormous uh, care what happens. But today, deputies, belongs to the 48th President of the Board of Deputies, uh, Marie van der Sill, and I offer her my warmest congratulations. I've been proud to serve with Marie, who succeeded me as chair of the Defence Division. She has been an absolute stalwart, tireless and effective and utterly committed, and I know that she will make a very, very fine president of this Board of Deputies. I also want to thank all of the staff who have given so much today. You've probably seen them all here today. They have worked exceptionally hard to deliver what I hope you will agree was a very skillfully and professionally conducted election with a lot of choreography, but a lot of hard work in making sure that we get it right. And I thank all of them. And deputies, just one last brief reflection in my closing words to you. You know that I have always stood for the Jewish people and for our community, of which I am endlessly proud, to stand tall and to stand fearless and to be proud of our values and our history and our traditions, and in our determination to continue them, sometimes against great odds. There is one word in the Tanakh which sums it all up for me, and it's a word not so well known, although it occurs in the benching, and it occurred in the Sedra of uh, Bechukotai, which we read yesterday, and I think it's the only or one of the only mentions of that word in the Torah, and that is komamiot. Komamiot, standing 
upright, usually expressed in contradistinction to slavery. When you're a slave, you're not upright. You have no independence, you have no free will, and you are shackled. And the opposite to that is the concept in which I would like the Jewish people and the world's only Jewish state always to take pride in, and that is Koma Miut. The Board of Deputies has, I believe, never stood taller in our community, in living memory, and perhaps well beyond than it has now. And that is a legacy that I'm extremely proud to hand on to Marie. And as we closed yesterday, the book of the Vayikra, I want to close today with exactly the same words. Chazak, chazak, v'nit chazak. Let us be strong, let us be strong together, and all of us will be strengthened. Deputies, thank you so much. They're giving a big clap, aren't they? They're giving a big clap. Yeah. Now, I know there won't be any questions uh, on that. Uh, <laughs> Stuart. I've been asked to say a few words on behalf of the outgoing HO's team, um, and uh, I believe also the exec, uh, the executive. I, I, I think the same applies to the board's professional staff and um, the deputies in general. In fact, the entire community. Um, Johnny, you have taken the board and left it in so much better a shape than when you found it, both in terms of external representation, also in terms of uh, our reach, our standing within the community. And, um, you know, to keep things very simple, you are going to be a very, very hard act to follow. But uh, I'm sure I'm not going to be the last person to ask the deputies to give you another round of applause for a spectacular job. Uh, Carol Abrams, David Safir. Thank you. David Safir, Mosaic Reform Synagogue. As an ordinary, well, my grandchildren would actually say extraordinary deputy, who finds political discourse and public life invariably more entertaining and less onerous to observe than to practice, may I just add my own tribute in the rhetorical mode you will no doubt recognize to our shy and retiring, well, retiring anyway, uh, President and Senior Vice President Johnny and Richard. I may not be the youngest in the room, but I'll just ask three very brief rhetorical questions. The first question, why so soon after just one term? Well, Harold Wilson, yes, those were the days. Harold Wilson stepped down to make way for an older man. Tisha Garrett Fitzgerald claimed his wife had insisted that at last he better get a proper job. And the patrician president, George Bush Sr., thought democracy required dynasties to take turns. But when Dai Dai Yenu is still ringing in your ears a month after Pesach, maybe somebody's tried to tell you something, and as Tevye respectfully asked Hashem when faced with yet another challenge, next time, could you please choose someone else? <laughs> the second question, beloved of fundraisers, what about your legacy? Well. On that count, who could dispute that both Johnny and Richard have not only contributed far more of their time, their talent, their emotional capital than we could reasonably expect or their long-suffering families tolerate, but that they have set an example in their dignity and in their integrity that has brought great credit to our community. In a society so deracinated, so emotionally vacuous and self-regarding that our detractors seek to demean us by redefining anti-Semitism to suit the perpetrator, by challenging our, but no one else's, right to self-determination. Johnny and Richard have not only punched above their weight, but chosen their battles and their words judiciously. Whatever the context, wherever the conversation, they've not only defended our community and all we cherish, but articulated the values, the aspirations that make us a beacon to all humanity. Whether explaining Brit Mila in Iceland or bringing food to war-torn Ukraine, calling out incipient Holocaust denial in Poland, or even challenging the forced resettlement of refugees from, yes, Israel, you have spoken out not just for us, but for beleaguered and oppressed people of other faiths and none. I am proud 
that you have made me proud to be a British Jew. And the third and last question, can we manage without you? Well, to quote one of the less popular US presidents, yes, we can. <laughs> Above all, because your successors will be able to draw upon the huge fund of talent, of skill, of commitment of the board's professional staff led so brilliantly by Gillian Merrin. And ironically, I believe the only person, Gillian, at the meeting with Corbyn who's actually served in a Labour government, as well as the experience, expertise and dedication of deputies, whether in divisions and working groups, plenaries and events, or back in their communities. So, I think I can close by saying we can safely say to you, Johnny, thank you and see you soon. To you, Richard, and I'm sure you will understand, Balshaya Spasiba and Dasvidanya. And although the last year may have seen the 100th anniversary of Balfour, the 70th of Israel, it also brought to you both a daughter and a grandson. <laughs> your joy is our delight. Now go and spend more time with your families. <laughs> Carol Abraham's Catford and Bromley show, and uh, <laughs> not really anything left to say after that, but um, I did say in Gibraltar how much we would miss Richard and what a great job he's done. There have been lots of praise for Johnny, and I'm not going to add to it, but I could just add a word for, not that I don't think you deserve it, <laughs> um, just add a word about Richard. If it weren't for him, I wouldn't be here, because one of his first acts as Vice President was to help me persuade Catford Shul to rejoin the board after they so mistakenly left it. You're doing the right thing for yourself, but I hope in years to come, you will eventually do the right thing for us and come back. Good luck. Uh, Karen Newman from the Liberal Jewish Synagogue. It's wonderful to take the mic, Johnny, when I think you can't take it away from me, even though I've, it's a, my second time at the mic. Um, I just want to say very briefly that to you, Richard, it was an absolute privilege and a pressure to serve on the group that you chaired to try and look at governance reforms within the board. And although democracy did exactly what it should do, which is tell us whether there was support for those measures or not, and there was not support for some of them, I think there are inklings that there may be some elements elements of those changes that could be useful. Uh, when we were talking about tenure, some of us said, well, it's asking turkeys to vote for Christmas, but I rather like what the deputy who said, actually, it's like asking chickens to vote for soup. Uh, I think that captures it better, and I suspect that that debate won't go away. Um, to you, Johnny, I think my first interaction with you was when you telephoned me, canvassing me for support for your presidency, and I said, Johnny, I feel it only fair to tell you I'm on Laura Marx's team, uh, which I was, and you then paused for a nanosecond and then said, well, could you think of putting me as your number two? And I thought, here's a man who's focusing on the core issues here. Um, my first meeting on the executive was quite uncomfortable for me because I felt duty bound to say something about what my constituents felt about the Jerusalem decision, with which I absolutely did not agree with you. Uh, but I have to say, from my perspective, again, as a progressive deputy, what you have been doing and what you have been leading over the past two months have been absolutely sensational. You have led us with coherence, with courage, with clarity, and with absolute precision. And you have put the board where I certainly don't remember it being in my lifetime. Yes, you've done it with the help of a fabulous professional staff, and i have one of the people who have every confidence that your legacy is in absolutely safe hands with Marie van der Zyl. But I want to take this moment again to say thank you to you for your leadership and your courage. Thank you, Johnny. Well, Mr. President, um, let me just say that it's a historic day for me because I've seen seven presidents before me and six presidents after me, and I know the tremendous responsibility which falls upon the presidents of the day, and of course it's only right that this meeting today should be the day after we finish the Book of Leviticus. That was, that, that was finished yesterday. That was the end of one book, 
and a new book, the book of Numbers, starts, starts this coming Shabbos, and therefore, a new, uh, and it's a new chapter in the history of the board. But you know, you've mentioned the words Chazak, Chazak, Venis Chazak. Please look at the very first chapter of Numbers, because it's, the following words do occur in the very first chapter. In the first person who's called up for Cohen, the words appear, Eire Kuruwe Ho Eidor. These are the elected members of the congregation. And Rashi makes a great comment upon this when he says, these are the elected members, the new honorary officers, but Rashi says, you, you must interpret the word Kuruwe rather as the word Kuruwe, because when they're elected, they're there to lead the congregation, and we look upon the new officers to lead the board, and, and, and this we will have great confidence. And of course, if they are career aid or they lead the congregation, then they will become the CEO aid or the princes of the congregation, the princes of the community. And we wish you well in your retirement, Mr. President, and we wish Mary van der Zeel and the new officers to be subsequently named every success, and, every, and, we, and in them we will have every confidence. Ilana Davis, Birmingham Progressive Synagogue. I wanted to express my sincere thanks to the uh, President and the other honorary officers, um, especially for their dedication towards promoting more young people getting involved with the board. Unfortunately, as many of you are aware, um, Jeff Ryan, who was the deputy for Birmingham Progressive Synagogue, passed away very suddenly, and therefore I had to take over his triennium. Um, and I have been elected to carry on to continue his legacy in the next triennium. But Jeff was very in sincere and kind in finding me a young person in the community to mentor, and he made it his duty to try and get more young people involved at the board by finding somebody to take over from his role. And I thought that was a really effective way of getting more young people involved. And each of the honorary officers have made it their task to express some kind of support in whatever way that they could to help young people thrive in the community that we have here. And I'm very grateful for all their support. Thank you very much. Laura Marks from the MRJ. Um, I would like to say two things. First of all, I want to join with others um, thanking Jonathan for we served together for three years. Um, we did a lot of work together, and it was a pleasure. And I've watched you grow into the role of president um, and really have to take my hat off to you and say you did a magnificent job, Johnny. So well done. It was a pleasure dealing with you. And the second thing I want to say is that this election has, thankfully, not been on the issue of gender. However, I would be remiss if nobody pointed out that Marie is a woman. <laughs> and to have a woman to be the president of the Board of Deputies of British Jews, the, she's only the second one ever. And I think that that is magnificent and I'm proud and delighted uh, and about to become the, uh, the deputy for the Association of Jewish Women. So I'll be continuing to fight the cause. But Marie, well done. We're delighted to have a woman as the president. So well done. Jonathan, you and I have disagreed on practically everything. However, however, in all our email correspondence, and indeed here, you have been absolutely fantastic and clear, and I respect you greatly for that. You will be a sad loss to the top table, and I'm going to miss you, and I'm going to miss our uh, email chats. <laughs> and um, Richard, I'll move on to Rich now. Richard, you are a bright hope for this community. You've aged more than three years in these three years, no doubt. <laughs> and all I can say is I hope that you will come back and bring back all your experience and all your good intentions 
and get things done in this community because, by God, we need people like you. Thank you. Deputies, I'm told that there is a fair bit of number crunching to go for the election of vice presidents. So I think what I had better do is suspend the meeting. I do understand it's been an awful long time for people to wait, especially if they haven't had a, a, a meal break or anything. Uh, I, for those people who remain, and I know there will be quite a number, I will call the meeting to order just as soon as I have a result. But we want to announce the results of the election for the Vice President of the Board. There were 245 ballots issued and 233 voted on. And I'm delighted to announce that the Senior Vice President of the Board of Deputies who won through at the first stage is Sheila Kiwa.